Dave, our two cats, Brady and Bailey, and I have been on some exciting adventures in our camper van named Desert Snow. This epic road trip from the Black Hills to Yellowstone is one for the books, y'all. Grab some popcorn and take notes. You just might want to visit some of these cool spots and hidden gems on this adventure. Good morning, good morning. So we're actually heading to the Black Hills today, but first. All right, it's my baby's turn to fill up. You get to do the dirty deed. I get to do the dirty deed. That clanky sound out there. All right, All right. I'm gonna fill up. Okay, let me know the damage. <laughs> I'm just really excited because we're going to be checking out the downtown area, babe, right? We're going to kind of explore some of the history here and have a drink in the old... That's right. It's what's, uh, what's that? Saloon, saloon number 10 number or something? number 10. You ready oh, to get... Infamous. You ready to rock this? I'm ready for some dead man hand. I am ready. <laughs> so we're cutting this little ramp short here because apparently... We're under a tornado under a watch. Tornado watch. we did not realize. No, and the gentleman we just spoke to said last night the hail was golf ball size. Dude, that's scary. That's we scary. Have course, uh, Snowball size and stuff like that, but we gotta yeah, he said, yeah, he said softball. Oh, my softball he size. He said softball size, which is not gonna be uh, nice for our oh. solar panels, if no, that's true we're tonight. we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do. So we're a little nervous. For our first, we've never been in a, a never tornado watch. Never been in a watch tornado watch ever in our before RV. in the RV. But to hear the, the snowball size makes me really nervous about the uh, no, I agree. Panels. And he was saying you get 80 mile an hour wind cutting over the Black Hills. We got to get down to Custer, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away to our RV park. So we're getting going. We got to get going. We're going. All right, we're going to kind of get our things going, hit the road. Okay. I am. We're going to be fine. I'm really nervous. But we have to get. <laughs> we'll be fine, baby. I am so nervous right now. We have never been this in our life. It's like. We gotta get going. Yeah, we're gonna get going. We're gonna be okay, baby. I love you. We're gonna be fine. Okay, time to get down to the RV park. We're heading down to Custer. All right, so I'm looking at the weather, kind of the radar here on the app for Custer, baby, and it says. It looks like we're going to get definitely a lot of rain and the outskirts of Custer, depending on where we are, might get some hail. Ugh. And that's going to be in about, we'll say 6.05. Wow, we're at 5 o'clock now. So and we're at 5 o'clock right now. It's so it's like probably like 40, 40 minutes, minutes to get, get there. there. So yeah, we have to... Uh... So I'm thinking if we get close enough and we see a gas station, I think we should pull to like an under... Yeah, there's an underpass. To underpass get. in the gas I'm station. Sure we'll get, I'm not sure if we'll find something, but we'll see. I mean... When you look outside right now, it looks like it's clear skies. And it says until 10 o'clock tonight, but when you look at the radar where we are, it says completely different. So I'm just hoping this is like those one incidents, one moments where like the weather, the weatherman is wrong. Exactly. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes. Oof. Okay, now all of a sudden you can see the clouds definitely are shifting. And when we looked at the, the radar, 645 looks like when it was gonna it's going to hit Custer where we are going to be so we're not sure if we should hang out here because we're at a gas station where we found an actual overhang here but we can hang out here for a little bit but oh man what a pickle I know it's kind of funny I know you actually some food here you can so, stay in the overhang or we're about 30 about 30 or so minutes from Custer 30 minutes from Custer so we also know it's gonna hit Probably 30 around minutes. that time, right? From, I'm trying to get some better forecast on this uh, stuff. Okay, so we are really, really nervous, and we're trying to decide if we want to move from this gas station and head a little bit more uh, towards Custer, which is roughly 18 miles from here. Now, this tornado warning is freaking me out a bit. We can't seem to get good Wi Fi enough to follow up kind of a point by point accuracy of the storm via radar. Look at those clouds, you guys. Like it was, it was clear and sunny before, and now, now it's not. And so I'm nervous. 
hopefully it's not this is the one time you want the weatherman to be wrong but oh my goodness gracious all right you guys if you've ever RVers, if you've ever been in like a situation like this and you have solar panels on the top would you leave a comment in the description box below letting us know what you do do you get like some plexiglass protective covers for your solar panels like what is going on always an adventure with us nice job babe okay that's good i'm glad they're they're really cool here yes. folks are really nice Very you see a lot of uh People on uh, motorcycles, oh, choppers. I forgot to tell you this. Yeah. So he did say, look for the clouds. What happens is when it's hailstorm, he goes, last night they had baseball size hail. Oh my God. And it says South Dakota is known to have the largest in diameter wow. hail. Wow. So Yikes. Perfect time to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're here for a week. Yeah. Whew. So we found a little safe haven. Yeah, definitely unexpected here. A little hidden gem. It's, a, it's basically a nice uh, grill attached to a gas station. But boy, they make some really good food. Yeah. This cheesesteak is dynamite. Right? And Dyn so is... Dynamite. Oh, look at that. Meat and cheese is right here. Oh, those meats oh. and cheese. Ooh. And of course, a little pulled pork sandwich on a potato bun. I'm ready to dive in. Take our time to avoid oh, yeah. what's coming right outside behind you. There's a storm coming. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. Oh, look at that in the Black Hills. Black Hills Central so cool. Railroad. It's a steam train. That is cool. That is so cool. 1880 train. 1880. Wow. That's an amazing That's chainsaw. Amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Holy moly. In Hill City. That is so cool. Oh, look at that. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. <laughs> wow. This is not my idea of a good time. Uh, there's so many cool towns here. Look there's so place. many cool towns here. Wow. Hippie rock star boutique. I would say we can explore, but let's get to our destination with this storm yeah. horizon. Oh, yeah. Cool. There it is. Buffalo Ridge Camp Resort, honey. Welcome. Good morning. Well, we were lucky and the storm did not hit us last night, so there was no no softball size hail, no tornado. Thank goodness. And now it's a beautiful day and a great way to explore the Black Hills is actually on your bike. We're going to do that right now. Hey, babe, you ready? I am so ready. It is blue skies, birds chirping, nice little wind and about 77 degrees. So it is time to hit the bikes. She left, but it was for the best. Down. One thing that's great, baby, to come into Deadwood is we're worried about parking, right, for for uh, desert snow. But there's great parking right here at the Welcome Center. Oh, tons. So right, you can just park this RV park. You park right there, and then the Main Street's just right down, just a little bit. So yeah. that's pretty sweet. So we are here right now on the Mickelson Trail. We came to like a stop, which basically says right over here, let me show you that you gotta have a uh, pass to ride on the Mickelson Trail. It's a daily pass of four bucks, which we noticed, right? And it's about 109 miles long. It goes all the way from Edgemont up to Deadwood. And where we are currently is in Custer, so we're right about in the middle. All right, and Custer's actually the oldest town in the Black Hills. Wow. Um, and it's funny because gold was first discovered here. Yes. Right by the Custer expedition that came in here with yeah. the geologists and all that. Right in French Creek, I believe. Right, yeah. And then, uh, but apparently when gold was found in Deadwood, the city was almost abandoned because everyone went to Deadwood because they thought gold was uh, more abundant yes. up in Deadwood, which was uh, probably very true. Quite the crazy illegal town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It can pull you out of your deepest pain. It's the sun on your skin right after the rain it's that you just know everything's gonna be okay i was praying down on my knees and i still can't believe you showed up out of the blue i'm so happy it hurt Folks, 
folks are coming here, I definitely recommend they see the video. That video is great at the uh, memorial here. You know, I'm gonna have to honestly say, when you first come into this museum, highly recommend going to see the, the film first, right? Which kind of sets the tone oh, for the, the rest of the day, great. right? I mean, you can really capture like the emotion just from the stories of the sculptor to Crazy Horse and to all the love and passion of their 10 children. Yeah, I know. That goes behind the story. It's amazing. And there's so much more than just the sculpture itself. Yeah. It's like so much of the history to learn, yeah. which is really what's super fascinating. Oh yeah, oh yeah. One 300 scale model. I thought it was funny. He's a, just a, a Polish sculptor from Boston. Exactly, and he even had the accent. I know, you could kind of hear his Boston the accent. accent. Heard the Boston accent coming out. I was like, oh Exactly. Yeah. No, just one Polish immigrant from and Boston. You can, you can tell he's a great storyteller, too. Oh, he's amazing. He, he could really he's tell amazing. stories, too. Yeah. I could listen to him tell right? a story all day. It'd be great. I know. Maybe we can tell stories like that one day. I gotta work on that. <laughs> they literally have here inside the museum that says tornado shelter. So, yeah, they do have tornadoes quite often, apparently, here. Yike. A Ruzies. Is that a canoe right there? Yeah, I think so. That thing must have cruised. Vintage at its finest. Baby, don't you leave me alone. Maybe, would you come on home now? Cause I'm your guy. And you're my apple pie. This is really neat. So it's a hide painting that was uh, by Pasca of Lakota. It's leather, rabbit fur, wood, and paint. It's really neat. This is a birch bark canoe from the Great Lakes region. Whoa. Pretty amazing. I guess from the tribe of the Chippewa. Ah. That's a, no, that's a, it's a modern one. That's a beautiful. I tried to get domesticated, but yesterday I find it good bacon. What a great day this turned out to be, right? Oh, it's amazing. I probably should have told my wife, but the minute I saw the light, I just dug out my boots and threw out the fanny pack, sold the plan and got my old honey back, cranked up the bike and flew out the cul-de-sac, straight to the nearest bar. So I, I don't know, apparently maybe this is the original of this one might be in Deadwood, I guess. Maybe we'll get to see it at some point. We'll see. So it's a fact. The rascal is Wow, quite impressive. There they are. Um just sit right. So I look at you, apparently this friends with Ray Kroc. Of course we saw that uh we saw that movie about the McDonald's. We weren't so sure weren't about Mr. Croc. We weren't so sure about Mr. Croc. Right, but hey, they're buddies. But, uh, and he obviously was super successful, did an amazing job. Yes, well, true. Shame on you. Get back to the Wow, a concrete stagecoach pulled by six horses. Yeah, Mark Twain, Cradle and Beals. I saw my reflection in the minivan and thought, this ain't who I am. So I dug out my boots and threw out the fanny pack, sold the bag and got my old party back, cranked up the bike and flew out the cul-de-sac. There's no place like home. All I really need to know is I learned from the Wizard of Oz. We're up to see the Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. There's actually no known photograph, documented photograph of Crazy Horse. And so actually the artist uh, came up with the face from talking to people who knew Crazy Horse when he was alive. I so know. it's, it's uh, pretty interesting, right, babe? Very, very interesting. Right, so you don't actually know for sure. You can't look at a photo and say, oh, that looks like him. The real sketch. Right, but it's, but it's hopefully it's pretty close. Yeah. Okay, so we got a little something. I did. I had to get a little plaster sculpture of the statue cool. itself. But there's a storm rolling then, in. Of course. What else this is, is like, new, this? Right? Is like deja vu. It's I think. like deja vu all over again. We're but, biking through another storm. But now we're actually uh, on our electric bikes, not driving. Is that better or worse? <laughs> Sounds like worse to me. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's like, oh man, it's always an adventure with us. <laughs> Check it out, you guys, we got horses out in the fields, just hanging out. Hi, 
Hello, cuties. How are you guys? Are you enjoying the beautiful weather? Yes, they are. They look healthy. They look healthy. Wow. Enjoy, you guys. We'll see you later. We got to keep pedaling the metal. Stay ahead of the storm. Turbo speed. Woo. Turbo speed. Alpen glow off of the mountain tops. All right, we're very excited and very nervous because we have no idea if the RV could actually go in to the park. I'm sure you you probably could because the fact that there's RVs here in the park, like there's RV campgrounds. But I haven't seen an RV yet. Uh oh, up in this direction. So let's see. We're about to approach the gate coming up soon. Oh, it's an RV. Right <laughs> I think we might be okay. There's more commercial trucks. That's what I believe, but we'll find out. Um, a lot of bunch of RVs in there. Where is that? Wait. Yep, there it is. Ten dollars. Not rush work. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! High five! Now relax. <laughs> now you're about, to, you're about to kill me. You're about to kill me. Ooh, wee. Oh, there's even a portal for buses and RVs. I guess we go. Uh, looks like. It says the right? RV bus is right there, so pull to the right here. Yeah. Looks like it's to the right. Is, am I getting to, in on that you, side? You're good. You go yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo! We made it up Mount Rushmore! Right? That's now we're it. 23 feet long. Where should we go to park? Well, I'll have you park at the small RV. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. So the America's Beautiful Pass doesn't get you. Right, because the they park charge here. for parking, parking here. Yeah. Got it. Good tasty tidbit. So the lighting ceremony is at nine tonight. Is that right? Woohoo! You ready? Excited? I'm Feel very better? excited. to build it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a, a one year thing. No. It took a while to carve. Exciting to finally be here. Right. So we're kind of at the amphitheater where they kind of do the ceremonial kickoff. Right, they do kind of, they're going to put the lights on for, for the lighting ceremony. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Right? Yeah. Look at all these people. I know, right? Everyone's ready. When you think of our country's national parks, and national monument. What do you feel? Do you feel happy? Nostalgic? I heard proud. How about proud? Our country's national parks and national monuments are an incredible gift that was given to us through the actions of our country's historical figures, one of whom is honored on the memorial behind me. I'm sure many of you can guess who. Theodore Roosevelt was a man who many refer to as the conservationist president and is very well known in his efforts for protecting the natural world. Roosevelt knew the significant value of our country's natural and cultural site, and he worked hard to conserve those places for the enjoyment of people back then, as well as today. It's hard to imagine, but not long ago, this great land of ours was pure wilderness. The United States has shaped itself under the guidance of strong leaders. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, to conclude our ceremony, most of these men and women have never met each other, and yet tonight they are bonded together on stage. Let's show them how we feel about them with another round of heartfelt applause. Well, that was great. That was great. I do love the, at the end, how they call up the uh, service folks and people, whether they've lost people or things like that. Oh, I know. It's really nice. It's kind of emotional a little I, bit, I right? I was going to say, it's very right? emotional. Like, I yeah. feel like this surge of emotion yeah, that's like, great. going through me. I'm really glad uh, you know, we could do this together. Yeah, really me nice. too. I lost my lust for gold, now cups of wine can't say. All right, we're 
we found it. <laughs> Good night. I know, we were like wandering trying Wait, to figure out. A second. I think I know where I'm going. I know. I'm sure that's the right You know, you got it. <laughs> there it is. Doesn't snow waiting for us. Snow Kitties are in there. I say, where are they? <laughs> what are we doing in this parking lot? True moment. True moment. Yes. Yeah, see if we lock it. Yes. yes. It's locked. You locked it. You locked it. Yes. They not know just where I'm Good morning, good morning. So today is gonna to be a really fun day for Dave and I. So we're actually heading into Custer Park. Now, the beautiful roads of Custer Park are not RV friendly. So we think we may have found a great solution to that. So we got up really early, we're having our coffee, we're getting our plan set because today is going to be that beautiful, beautiful, memorable day in Custer Park. Let's go. Ooh, are you ready? See if I can actually start it. Oh, I know, right? See if I can start, start it. The you have to have your foot on the brake. Yeah, I got it. Should I give it a there start? There you go. Give it a start. Just... Oh. All right, success. All oh, right. I can start it, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There we go. Are you ready? Should I get in? I think you should get in. So, is it safe for me to get in now? I think it is safe, yeah. yeah. You gotta put a seatbelt on too, right? Oh, yeah, I got my seatbelt. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me uh, flip this over for you right here. There you go. Thank you. This is gonna be awesome. Wow, we have our pass. On the wildlife loop trail now. Hopefully, we'll see some wildlife. Oh my gosh! We almost have lunch here. Look, I know, right? Have like lunch. I here. know that's true. Oh man! Maybe a little oh, best burger. I five. I think the you Black know Hills. the spot. The best hit. Best oh yeah! Burger oh, they came for that. Oh, it's so peaceful. You can stop and just listen to the wind blowing in your ears. Everyone's kind of made it their own self bridge here. Just trying to get across this little stream when maybe, just maybe, taking your shoes off and walk across. Hey Dave, you can just take your shoes off and walk across. I know, I can just go across. And this is why we don't take desert snow down this road. No, we do not. Mike's not plugged in. <laughs> At the end of the passes, I believe there's two more we're gonna hit. And I am from a, looking at that kind of description box out front. The one that's uh, the most scenic is the one where you kind of write up one right. uh, much more, I believe, right? I think that's probably right. <laughs> Look 
up there. The profile of George Washington. You know, one of the coolest things when you're visiting the Black Hills, right, babe, is to check out the yes. Mount Rushmore statue. Absolutely. The monument's amazing. You no, know, it is, and uh, it's a great time. You can visit really any time of day. It's beautiful. But the best time is to check it out at night. Yes. Because they put on a full ceremony, there's a history lesson, and a lighting event that's worth checking out, right? Absolutely. Isn't this place neat? Oh, it's, it's amazing. It so feels so nice. relaxing. Yeah. What a great spot. Yeah, it's a nice outdoor seating, like right over there. You kind of sit outside. And then in here, there's like a restaurant and a bar before you get in here. I know. But I know we're trying to hold off for some of the best burgers around. Yeah, so we're going to hold off. True. But this is great. Built in 1938. And boy, it's beautiful. Yeah. I think part of the building underwent a fire. A right. part that was built in 1991. And then uh, fortunately, it didn't really hurt the structure of the original building. Um, just some smoke, things like that, but it'll be back soon. Gorgeous. Wanna head on to Sylvan Lake? Let's do it. Wow. Right? This it, is amazing out here. Sylvan yeah, Lake. Yeah, definitely a great spot to visit Sylvan Lake. I mean, you can, right, you can swim, you can kayak, you can paddleboard. I know. You, you can hike around, just explore the place. I mean, people are hiking all over the rocks here. What a beautiful, look how beautiful it is, unbelievable. If we had the time, we would. I mean, I just, you can almost walk through like each each area. The formations of the rocks are so different. So you're gonna see something different with every step. And I believe it's a mile loop um, where you see folks walking on the trail out that direction. There's a kind of a loop that goes around where you can really kind of capture the, the views. I think we can do it, what do you say? I think we can do it. I'm not sure if we have time today to do it just because the uh, UTV has to be back. Right, I know back. we do have, we have the, the rental deadline. Yes. Deadline. Looming, looming. Looming. The rental deadline of looming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one lane tunnel coming up. Ready for the one lane tunnel? I'm ready for it. I had enough practice with the others. This place is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've only seen it in pictures. Now I'm physically here. <laughs> right. To witness this beautiful, beautiful marble. Right, Needles. This is what I call Needles Highway. Look at them all. Right? Maybe it's like you're. You have Needles Eye Tunnel, which is tiny. Yeah, it's almost so, like threading a needle, right? Yeah. You just kind of. Yeah, we're going to go through in a moment. You're going to have the right string to thread that needle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> spots in the Black Hills. I mean, look at this. This is one of them. Man, I just hang out right here. Just before you hit the tunnel, just climb through one of the, yeah. you gotta climb through one of the needles. <laughs> but this is what awaits you on the other side. All right, time to head through the Needles Eye I Tunnel. Know. It's like the eye of the tiger. Here we right. go. Eye of cinnamon. Here we go. Nice job, babe. Oh, a little bit of a road, a little bit of a, yeah. a 
log jam. A little bit of a log jam. Sure, sure that happens a lot. Yes, for sure. But well worth it. Yeah, well Do worth it. it. Yes. <laughs> Through the uh, Needle Vine Tunnel. Yeah, baby. Look at this view. We can come out the other side. Uh, so we couldn't get to that burger spot. I mean, it was only open until about three o'clock. Right. Um, but we talked to several locals, and the spot that we're at now, they're saying, is the best in South Dakota called Skogan Kitchen. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it looks incredible, and uh, we're just excited to get a spot here. We I also know. heard it's really hard to get a spot because it's so popular. I know. So we were fortunate. I mean, they said, come in, we can sit you at the bar here, which they call this is the bar, and then we have one hour. So I wonder if that's a standard thing, since they're always so busy, but they squeeze us in, so. No, buffets are like an hour and a half or two hours. Good point. That's a very just good point. one hour. <laughs> Outrageous. Yeah. So we can see our pikes out there. Perfect. <laughs> they, they knew it. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Perfect. No, it's a little different shishito peppers yeah. that we're used to. Uh, very. Right. It's got a lot of fun things on there. I can almost taste like that parmesan and right. It's got walnuts in there, a nice kind of glaze. Look at those and the vidalia, sort of onions. I'm gonna feed you. Oh, feed me, Seymour. Oh. Feed me. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. <laughs> now there's always this, there's always a hot one in there. I know. We're and I the usually hot. end up getting them. So let's see. You do, right? Should I try this one? Try it. I'm, I'm, I'd love to see what you think. That's a hot one. You got the spice one. I got the spice oh, one. Yeah. It's really good though. Super creamy. Like all great flavors in it. And uh, the shishito shines through it. Right? And of course that spice kind of caught me by surprise a little bit. But that's excellent. Oh, it has arrived. Whoa. Look this thing. That. Oh, yeah. That looks amazing. That's a good babe, you're gonna like it. <laughs> the sauce is mild, it doesn't overpower the ribeye. You still taste that ribeye. What's good? Welcome to South Dakota. Great faces, great places. Hey. Woo. All right, you excited? <sighs> Trying to catch my breath. <laughs> it is so hot out there. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. Let's, Let's roll. roll. We're entering, we're entering in the town of Deadwood. Oof, I think we already entered the town, but we're in the historic part of Deadwood. But uh, as you look past all of the delicious bug, bug splatters, yes, yeah, plenty of bug splatters. Nature is all over us. Guys, we're dead with trolley. Yay, that's great. Hello, Kobe. Absolutely beautiful shepherd. Hi. Whoa, Dave. Oh my god. What's going on? What about the well, storm? Yeah, we have a severe thunderstorm warning with uh, apparently, like, you know, kind of good sized hail potentially might oh, come through. No. Yeah, I know, I'm a little nervous. So. What do we do? Hail, we just talked about this. Oh my gosh. Really bad. You know, I'm uh, really nervous. I gotta go up there and check because it's. Um, you can't do that tonight. Well, once the storm passes. I think tomorrow. Because if if you go up there and you check and there's something wrong, are we gonna sleep? What's the difference between no, now just, and tomorrow? Yeah, I just want to know if a solar panel has been busted. Or and something. then we should probably check that in the morning. Okay, we can certainly check in the morning. That's fine. Oh my gosh! Look at that. I see all those colors. Oh my gosh.
It's massive. It's still coming down. Jeez. Wow. You see this, Dave? No, it's like this stuff came bashing. It was like freaking just slamming it down was on the roof. Ridiculously slamming. Oh, well, look what's. Thank God we moved that under. I know. Yeah, that poor little baby would have been like smash. But look at this. Look at that. That's like all puddle. Wow. And that really rained. Maybe it just passed by. Because it's like a clear. Yeah, look. Oh my. Look, it's not amazing. Look at the moon's out now. And I see the moon. It's going the storm in just, The storm just went flying by. It's ripped. Yeah, maybe I'll just go up and take a peek. I don't think I want us to take a peek tonight. Tomorrow? I asked you, please. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'll definitely do it in the morning. Yeah, the morning for okay. sure. I know. Well, they aren't golf ball size. That's good. No. We had that going for us. <laughs> but oh my God, they were like—I mean, they were hitting like a son of a gun. Honestly, I've never been in a hailstorm. Yeah, not like that. Not like this. I don't think I've ever been in that. Yeah, and that's um, that certainly not like in an RV. Common here. I know. And I don't want to worry us anymore tonight. So I'm gonna say, let's sign off. All right. Till the morning. And say our prayers. And Desert Snow, we love you. And so hopefully he's nothing's wrong. Oh my God, babe! Look at all that hail in there. Gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You can have like a snowball fight in here or an ice fight. Literally, you can like knock somebody's eye out. That is. Nice and sunny. That is that what you want, Redder? Is that better? Good morning, hon. Uh, morning, babe. Okay, time for some coffee. Yes. And uh, I'm so nervous. The moment of truth. And I'm a little nervous. I know. I don't know what to expect up there. You're going to have like a bunch of dingy dents. I know. The solar panels are the biggest thing I'm worried about. I know. I'm going to go check it. Be careful. I know. I kind of. Like one thing by putting there. these uh, mud tracks on here, it makes it a little bit. Oh. Hey, baby. What? What? Where are you? I'm looking up at your butt. Looking at my butt, yeah. I don't see any damage up here. I gotta say, I think we lucked out. Yeah, no, I think we got lucky. I mean, these things are strong because that was some serious hail hitting those things. I mean, oh my God. Yeah, no, I don't see any damage. Not confident, but I wasn't scared. I know, you were like, don't check it till morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what I need right now? More coffee. Yes. <laughs> Before we head into the town of Deadwood, I want to share with you guys a little, just a little quick mini tour of this campground KOA that we're staying at. It's under new ownership and Donnie and the team have been really amazing. And take a look at it. You could even stay in one of these guys right here. They have two, which are wagons. And boy, that looked kind of fun. Little vintage throwback. Uh, they even have cabins you can stay in. Or like us, if you have RVs, you can kind of hang off around the back. They do have a pool here. Now, I know some of you that don't have RVs may not be interested in, you know, a place like this, or you should be, because they have other things that you can uh, enjoy here. Stay in a wagon, enjoy the pool, and it's very close to the proximity of Deadwood. Now, we're gonna be jumping on a trolley here, but before we do, I have to show you this, and I'm saving the best for last. Come with me. Ugh, but it is really hot, and I feel like we should probably take a dip in that pool. Maybe later. Hi, honey. Aren't they adorable? Hello, honey. They have a baby, sort of a miniature donkey. Hello. Are you coming to say hello to everybody? What is watching you? Ah, so we have cupcakes and sprinkles. So they're pick me goats. You can actually go in there and get 50 cents for a bag so you can feed them, which is really nice. We got Pete, and Pete is a miniature donkey. So take a look at Pete oh, over stop, here. Stop. Oh, and then watch out for this one. Watch out for this one right here. Oh, well, no, look, he's just right there. Mm, yum, yum. You like the fresh stuff. You guys like the fresh stuff, huh? Fresh stuff. And there's Pete the protector. Bye, you guys. We'll see you later on. Is that yeah. wild, Bill? I think it's Wild Bill right next to us here, just hanging out, waiting for the bus. Waiting for, we're the, wait, we're waiting for the trolley. Waiting for the trolley. We're waiting for the trolley into Deadwood. Looks like that might be uh, Miss Calamity Jane, or maybe not. I'm she not looks sure. too that looks too be, fancy. That looks may too... be kind of a, uh, a brothel owner, for oh. sure. Oh. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> 
Suspicious. <laughs> Suspicious. You gotta make your appearance because you are way too pretty to not. This is the beautiful mask guy. Apparently this place might be haunted. It was an old, uh, almost like a house for the age, like an oh. elderly house. Maybe an orphanage as well. So probably a lot of, uh, a lot of souls in there. So after this like evening, we're go going in. No, go downstairs, <laughs> it's, uh, no it's you have to come with us. It's uh, dark. I've been, I've been in there. I ain't going in there. <laughs> Apparently it's uh, All aboard. All aboard. Here we are. All aboard. inside the visitor center and it's actually a perfect place to start here in Deadwood because it kind of gives you a little overview map of what to expect here. It gives you like beautiful visuals. There's actually folks at the desk that can kind of really help kickstart your adventures here in Deadwood, which is kind of what we're going to do. We're going to learn a little bit about this place here before we start diving in and finding out some of the coolest places to eat. Of course. <laughs> There's gold in the creek. Gold in the creek. And prospectors found gold in Deadwood's Golden Gulch in late 1875. Oh, baby, I think it's time to start panning for some gold. Can we pan in here? Right. I'd love to pan. I think so. I mean, this is where it all began back in 1876. Found some gold here. Found some gold right. in this. All around. And right in the creek. Chaos all in the our, gulch. Right. Going back in time right here. The stage coach. Little stage coach. Kind of there. Yeah. Right, going across. Look at that. Do they do like the uh, thumbs hitchhiking back in the days? I don't know. Like we can give it a try. Or do they have to show a little name? I think you got to show a little green. <laughs> 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 this might be more our speed here. Wow, I like it. Right here we go. It's the gold finding machine right here. The gold finding mobile. There it is. There it is. I like it. I love that handsaw they got. Look at that handsaw. Pretty cool. It's really cool. You see this, babe? I feel like all along the way you see these sort of time stamps. You see these sort of time stamps with like all the folks in history, the miners, I know, the right? wealthy men coming into this illegal town, getting ready to uh, collect their fortunes. But none of them look happy. No one's really smiling except this one. Wait, could this be? Is it possible? They all are wearing Let's Turn It Up World buttons. Oh my goodness, you're right. <laughs> They're all wearing Let's Turn It Up World buttons. That's a little creepy. You know what, deja vu. I always had this sense of deja vu. I think I handed out a bunch of them during this time and era. This reminds me of The Shining, the Jack and Nicholson and all those photos. You would go there. <laughs> Where are you? Are you in this picture? <laughs> Forgive the noise. It's a very popular spot here for motorcycles. You're gonna hear them going by. But I wanted to give you some history about Deadwood, which actually began as an illegal town in 1876. And that's because initially the Lakota were granted all of the Black Hills way back when, but then when gold was, was discovered, all bets were off and it was a full gold rush. Everybody came into Deadwood looking for gold and it became just a really lawless and illegal town. Well, look what we got here, Dave. We got Mr. Wild Bill Hickok sitting and holding it down right here in the I guess the uh, main street of Deadwood here. It's pretty darn, pretty uh, nice bronze here for sure. Right? 
And so it's interesting because it shows the signature on his feet. Oh, wow. The two people that did this were Monique Zilikowski, who's a family member of the, I believe the other Zilikowski, Z Z Zilikowski, I'm not sure how I pronounced that, but he's the one that actually did, um, or started working on the Crazy Horse Monument. Oh, wow, okay. So the family, uh, she came, I guess they came down here, her and James, they erected him just sitting here and I'm, I'm, I'm almost assuming he's I feel like Wild Bill's all over town here. all over town here you find him everywhere all and here he is town here. you come what, on in what a great little image you've been here yeah it's really cool wow so it definitely is a mini Vegas right this in particular right? feels I'm having flash straight up Vegas yeah, I'm having flash flashes to Las Vegas I'm right now really big flashes I mean this uh, and of course it is MGM exactly it's an MGM sports book right here in Deadwood Day. Exactly, and definitely not sponsored. Not sponsored. True liquid gold liquid right here. Liquid gold! Black gold right here. <laughs> this is it. Beverly Hillbillies coming into Let Starbucks. Let me at it. Let me at it. Howdy, partner. How's that liquid gold? It's mighty fine. It's mighty, it's mighty fine. Mighty fine. But don't tell all those prospectors about all that liquid gold here. We're going to keep oh. it a secret. We're going to keep it a secret. We understand that apparently there are a lot of Chinese immigrants that came to Deadwood to work here and apparently started also kind of washing the clothes of the miners. You wonder if they actually got gold dust. And apparently in this area here, we believe there was another Chinatown way back in the day. Mr. Wu's. She's right, now, well, got slot machines in there. Wow, what did you find over here, babe? This place wow. is unbelievable. This is super cool. It's just a lot of carvings on it. I'm hopefully gonna meet the artist on the other side, but apparently these carvings are all done uh, with a chainsaw and I guess a blowtorch where you can kind of see some of what they burn in some of the colors of the, the uh, carvings here. So this is really super cool. So come on in, Dave. We're gonna get a little so, preview. Um, right now, all my pieces are burned, but they'll come as a rough cut. Like the, the cardinals don't get burned, they get painted. Okay, so the Cardinals get painted. By the way, what was right. your name? But that's Lori. Lori, I'm Tanya. Oh, sorry. This is Dave yeah. right here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so yeah, rough cuts are here. Then they burn them. They come over here. Tanya will do the bases on them. Oh, look at the bases. And then once they come to me, they look like this. So this is considered a, a rough cut. Okay. Rough that's cut. cool. But then I use my power tools and I put cute little faces so they look like the ones outside wow oh, wow yep. so these are the rough cuts and, right and how there. long how long would you say a piece let's say like Total? this goes for yeah Total, oh how much a piece like oh, that how goes long for? how long to put it all together from oh start okay to so Fati Fry takes maybe a half hour he's been doing this he's for years nice. wow yeah, that's amazing uh, he's been only been doing it for actually four years but he's a natural he does wow. this um, so cool. he takes about a half hour to do a bear probably uh, it takes me about 15, maybe 20 minutes to do the facial features. Yeah. And then the eagles are a little more difficult. I have to do the beaks on them, the eyes, talons, tails. Um, but when we're all done, I would say each piece, I don't know, it's hard to say because it goes in steps. So total maybe three hours. Wow. That is But fast. over a few days. Yeah, of course. Now, Tanya has her eye on a few of these carvings. I have a feeling we may end up with a, a new house guest here in Desert Snow. We'll see. Um, have, you have your eye on... Uh... There is two. I mean, I do like the stability of this guy right here. But right. I think the cute face, the really super... I mean, they're all cute faces, let's face it. But that little guy, little guy over seems there. to be resonating with us. Let's and, go take uh, a look. All right. Let's... Oh, he's really cute. Right? Uh-oh. Maybe this one here? <laughs> But this is a different one, but that one's pretty cute. But this guy could actually, it looks like he can hold. Oh, he holds a he sign. He can hold a sign. And right, maybe, sign maybe for a little extra, we can get them to put Let's Turn It Up World. And that we can put right in that hand right there. And then every time we park somewhere, Dave. I like it. What do you think? Maybe. What do you guys think? If you think that's a cool idea, I'm sure by the time you watch this, the decision will already have been made. But between the ones we just showed you, one, the cute one that had the sign, two, the cute one that doesn't have the sign here, or three, and I can head one, over there. the cute one that doesn't have the sign either, but super cute. All right, so I can't tell you which one I chose, but I can tell you it's probably the cutest of them all. And uh, I am gonna share with you guys which one we got 
a little later on in this video. Oh, wow, he was a pretty tall fella. He was. Wow, he was quite tall. You're like 6'2, and right? he's got to be like Shaquille O'Neal height right there. I love that smell, the smell of wood. You smell it? Oh, it's good. Yeah. Ready? Here we go. Wait, cute. Oh, look at my legs. Woo. Okay. Ready? Better hold on. Cue the cowboy music. Yeah. Cue it. Woo! Cue it. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, he's going back. He's going back. He's going. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, keep going. Oh, Quite the dragon right there. Ready? Yes. Go. Woo. Photos. So it looks like it was a gas station. Oh, there it is. Babe. That is in action. There it is in action. And that is a mule. That's the mule. So really cross day right next to the original saloon number 16, which we'll probably show in a minute. There's a whole slew of like women dressed scantily, which apparently was the historic site here of Pam's purple. Yeah, Pam's purple, purple door. door. Pam's purple, purple door. door. So at a, uh, Pam's purple door. <laughs> purple door brothel. That's a brothel. And uh, uh, apparently oh. it was in existence until 1980. Ooh. Well, so there it is, right? The original location. The original location. Wild Bill Hickok got shot in the Ooh. back of the head. You're welcome, Dave. You made American Pagans on the wall. Oh my god. Wow, that's pretty creepy right there. That is crazy. <laughs> right. Hello. Food so Hill Tour. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't really what Deadwood looked like back in those beginning days. A little more muddy, a little more bloody. However, opening up to the gorgeous colonnade that you see on the left would be the historic Franklin Hotel. Welcome to legendary building. Historical you Franklin Hotel, a Carnegie Library. However, folks, we ask you to look perpendicular to the bus. Turn it up, world! Right, welcome to the Adams Museum. Museum. Yeah. Ah, we're in a mission, you guys. There's so much to see and explore here. Wow. Oh, here we go. The legends of Deadwood as we enter. Oh, there's... I see Calamity. I see the Sheriff. I see Wild Bill. And I see uh, the Brothel Queen over there. All right, Dave. We got to take a picture with these guys. How can you not take a picture with the uh, yeah. living legends of Deadwood? Can we get it there in time? We yeah. And freeze frame. <laughs> yes, this is Potato Creek Johnny's actual gold nugget. And there's a uh, plaster model of Plesiosaur, which apparently was found about uh, just 30 miles from here. That's quite the chair. It's really neat. It's like Game it's of Thrones. Horn. It's actually horn and antler furniture. So it's like this is horn and antler. See, so you're right. This is like the Game of Thrones or some like chief or something. Right, the throne of uh, thorns or something. Oh, a mammoth leg over there. You got yourself a mammoth leg. Wow, and here is the first locomotive in the Black Hills. Like this is Chinese. Asian. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm amazed actually they had this massive Chinatown here. I know. Apparently one of the largest between uh, the coast yes. across the US. Yes. And there's the dragon. Oh yeah, right That's above. Check it out. Celebratory celebration. Deadwood's early roads right there represented. Oh. 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 oh it's holding together. Oh Tanya, where are you going? <laughs> oh, not too far because the Oh, no, it's all oh, falling apart. That's that's the road. Gracious, so that's a real calf, you guys. Born with two heads. Oh my gamongas. Woo! Yeah, hey. now apparently this is uh says Robert Wadlow, who apparently is the tallest person in recorded history. Oh my right? it says he was eight feet eleven inches. Oh, this is actual to proportion. Uh, now, kind of a sad story though, came to uh, to Deadwood and I just had to wear braces for the weight and ended up getting an infection oh. in his leg from the brace and died at the age of 22. Wow. Right. I feel like this is like the colony of Wonder Woman. All the uh, Amazon women. Oh, you weren't recording. Yeah, no. We're on our way to a shootout. Oh, we're already here. We're already here. Here it is. Yep. There we are. Got to the shootout here. Guys, I think Dave is uh he's got as good as gold shirt on from Bucky's. Getting ready to step into the line of fire here. Or shootout. Are you a part of the show? I hope not. Okay. <laughs> good as it gets. 
Joe Who's before? thinking you have a good as gold shirt on there? That is true. They may, they may want to come for it because you know Bucky's is gold. This is my gold. <laughs> Back off, my gold. Back off. Way off the unstarted. That's right. Well. How are you doing today? Which guy am I? I'm this guy. <laughs> I'm the great guy. <laughs> Johnny Barnes, nice to meet you. Johnny Barnes. Oh, yeah, guys, here we go. Here. Hi. Well, hello. How are you all doing today? Good. How are you, great Mr. Back. Barnes? Yeah, can't to stay in the gulch, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Where y'all from? Two places, really. We're from Nevada, and we're doing a road trip across America and heading up to Boston. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, we <laughs> Watch out for those little sharpshooters up there. Oh, that oh, could be some danger oh, there. oh. <laughs> <laughs> they start them young today. They start them young. Wow, Vegas. Uh, yeah, Vegas. Yeah, it's a cool place. Absolutely. Historic Bronco Tour here in Denver. No sleeping, no pissing, clean bed. These are the house rules. Wow. Kind of interesting, the, um, the Gem Variety Theater was actually one of the first uh, brothels effectively that actually brought everything upstairs. So we are in what is known as Badlands territory. Basically from here all the way down to where the lights are, this is like the Badlands. So booze, brothels, and gambling. Right, gambling, all that. All, all the... went on here. And apparently all the beds broke except this one, so the myth says. I'm not sure what that means. Yep. I don't plan on giving it a touch or a try, but hey, you know, hey. That bed's not broken. Not broken. So this was the madam's rooms where they'd have basically the, the drop boxes. The cash would be kind of organized to reveal all the girls and their names and it'd have these sort of like drop boxes so the money would be dropped right into these containers here uh, or they'd have a little bit in there and uh, as the madams got smart or stuffed in a vacuum cleaner. Stuffed in a vacuum cleaner. Hide in plain sight. I don't love this. They even have like shot glasses, with tokens, little pins. Wow. started here on the trolley and I must say it was a, a lot of fun today but we have one special spot coming up if we get there on time we were told there's a really great spot to have some of the best burgers here in town so if we get there on time I'm definitely gonna be trying a few what a day what a day Oh, yeah. And we're a, still on the. We're going to get back. Still on. We're running a little late. A little. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, uh, they didn't wait for us. I know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, they're enjoying their meal right now. <laughs> Woo! Welcome to the Boar's Nest, Dave. So, we actually made it. Can you believe we made it on time? Well, we made it. I don't know if it's on time. It really wasn't on time. <laughs> no. Okay. It worked all that. So. <laughs> oh, all cool. thanks to oh, our, yeah. our homies here. And Luke, right over here, sacrificed himself so that we could be comfortable in a seat. And he was laying in the back Honestly, peacefully. It was pretty comfortable. I was won't it, lie. Was it pretty it wasn't comfortable? Bad. It wasn't bad. Thank <laughs> you. 
Would you like some barbecue sauce? Barbecue sauce and you left some barbecue. Oh, oh. Alright, here it comes. Alright, action. Alright. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Oh. A nice technique. Put it all over me, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's outrageous. So awesome. Put it all over me. Right now. Damn. <laughs> Oh, to, there it is, Abel. The, the best everybody. burger so we might right be here in Deadwood. All right. At Boar's Nest Roadhouse. Boar's Nest Roadhouse. Right, Roadhouse. Show me the bite. Hey, there we go. I got somebody looking over here. What's Happy biting. biting. Oh, wait. Oh. Hi, cutie pie. Hello. Hi, I'm so sorry. You can be a tissue good, uh, first. Pork and burger. All right, go for it. Let me right, see. Here we go. First bite. First bite. First react. You want to know what my diet in Bismarck, North Dakota was? Big waves and I have a feeling I know I know what the answer is gonna be. Mm. That's over to the Yes, exactly. That's damn good. Oh I can see it in your face. I may like lay around a little more barbecue more sauce beers. too. Got a pile of barbecue that's sauce good. On oh yeah, that's good though. You got pork on there. Oh that's good. High five. High five. High five. How do you do it? That's the proper way to eat it. Alright, like this. Oh, oh Okay, I see. I got it. I got it. You, got, you gotta get the pork rolling up in the nostrils. I got it. <laughs> this, got it this bite here is called the Luke. The Luke. Let's see it. <laughs> now, why is this a Luke? What's wrong? Oh, no. She didn't get some of the Oh, you did. Yes, you did. Turn it up, world! Okay, so Dave and I, we've stayed in some really cool places over the years, and we were literally handed the keys to stay in one of the most unique places we have ever stayed in. So tonight, we are not gonna be sleeping in our gorgeous 2022 Winnebago Echo, but we'll be sleeping in this. Yes, that's right. So tonight we are gonna be sleeping in this here. Yes, a wagon that's basically been converted into somewhat of a homestay. Now, before we get started, because we are kind of hungry and it's time for us to cook on that, looks like a really cool grill here in this homestay. We might as well give you a quick little tour, but I must warn you, this ain't no echo. Woo wee, well howdy y'all. Well, welcome to our humble abode for the evening. But I must tell you, the only real way to feel and experience staying in a wagon converted is to physically be here. But before we get cooking on the grill, we figured we'd give you a quick glimpse of what our humble abode for the night is uh, gonna be like, starting right over here. Well, hold up. Before we actually get started, I must tell you and say thank you to Donnie and the team here at the KOA in Deadwood for allowing us to stay in here. Now, it's not sponsored, but they figured since we stayed at quite a few places all over the world, it'd be a fun opportunity for us to check out and experience what it's like to stay in a wagon. I mean, seriously, y'all, a freaking wagon. But Dave, it's what? Pretty cool, right? Oh, I think it's very cool. All right, y'all, check it out. Turns out that I just got a little bit south, just a little bit north of the Georgia line. Would you look at here? What the fuck is going on over here? What, what are you doing, cowboy? Howdy, partner. <laughs> are you napping in a bunk bed? I guess he's napping in a bunk bed, y'all. This is exciting. Let another fun adventure begin. So I have never been to Montana. I've never been to Yellowstone. May have passed through, but never have actually set foot in here besides watching like, you know, the show Yellowstone and right. the other things. But this is super cool to be here. All right, Grizzly RV Park, we made it. And if you're coming into West Yellowstone in an RV, a great spot to stay is the Yellowstone Grizzly RV Park. It's a great location just outside of town. You can just walk uh, a couple blocks, you're right in downtown, in the center of town, and just a few blocks away also from the gates of Yellowstone. Just a great spot. People here are super friendly. Place is very clean. And you got this too. Come on, check that out. All right, so for Dave and I, June is kind of a special month. Uh, it's sort of our birthday month. You know, for those of you that don't know, Dave and I, we share the same birthday, June 18th. 
And so we decided we're gonna be here in Yellowstone. There's this fun spot that's very popular right behind us, right there called the Buffalo Bar. So we're gonna go in, have a celebratory beer, and just enjoy the fact that we're here in Yellowstone for our birthday month. Yeah. Cheers. It's a great fun time here. Boom, boom, boom. And happy birthday, month. Happy birthday, month. Love for you. all June birthdays, happy birthday, happy month. Happy birthday, month. You too. Too, too. Good morning, good morning. So we're at a gas station here in West Yellowstone, just filling up because we're heading into Yellowstone, heading up on the north side towards Lamar Valley. So we're kind of in a moose habitat, but I'm not sure if we'll see any. What do you think? Moose? Uh, odds are probably low in this particular moment, <laughs> but it's a, it's a beautiful like streams here coming through. Right? So the one thing that makes it really hard to find moose is that they're usually very solitary type animals. So unless there's uh, a moose with the cow, the baby, you're not really going to see like herds like you'd see with elk right. or bison. So that just makes it harder to pinpoint. It's like every every corner there's something different to see uh, but the air is super cold super fresh i am still um high hopes that we're gonna see a moose but i just love that we every every inch of the way you stop there's like a different terrain there's like a different view the sun comes out and gives you like a whole different perspective of yellowstone it's so awesome oh we're coming up to our first stop here where there's people on the road what is it do you think it's a bear do you think it's bison a lot of, my, it's, what percentage do you think it's bison? I, I think it's bison because I what can't percentage do you think 95 percent. 95 percent is bison i say it's something else Let's talk with the ranger out there for a split second and there is a gray wolf that's laying awesome. in the pastures out there yeah i've never seen a, a wolf in the wild that's yeah. so cool and these folks here i was worried at first i'm like don't get too close but I saw the ranger and she said the rule of thumb is a hundred yards. Yeah, so we're plenty distance. Plenty there. of space between that and the gray wolf, which is out there. High five! Yeah, nice. Okay, nice Hopefully start. Hopefully we'll get a good look at one eventually, yes. but that's amazing. It's a great sight. You can tell, I mean, when you see all these cars here, it's not just a few bison. No, <laughs> like it's not. Everybody's pulling everybody's over. Everybody's pulling over. Everybody's pulling over to see the wolf. baby definitely feel the altitude yeah <laughs> right i'm breathing a little heavy little a little heavy so what do you think babe first time in yellowstone i love it right it is so amazing it reminds me so much of iceland it right does kind of like the boiling uh underground all the water coming up steaming it's crazy oh uh, and what a perfect time you know it's a little oh, bit yeah. later in the day so there's no one here so I we know. have it all to ourselves my leopard crop <laughs> <laughs> all right whoa look at this it's a little stinky Oh, I was thinking, but oh, it is beautiful though. Look at that. Look at the colors. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. Wow. Well, this beautiful pool that you see over to my right, your left, is gorgeous, but you are not allowed to throw coins in there. Seriously, it is unlawful. Seriously. Right, it's not a wishing well. Not a wishing well, you guys. You're throwing coins in. You throw something in there, it'd be a wish you wouldn't Don't expect. Don't do it. Look at it. A live geyser going on right there. It keeps on going, right? It just keeps going. Yeah. Giving all the good stuff right over there, huh? 
I just love how you see like snow capped mountains in the distance. Like off. Right, bison in the field. And yeah. Then the guys are right here. I mean, right geezer. here. I think I see Old Faithful. I think that's got to be it. That's like really huge smoke, Dave. Like that's really a lot huge, of smoke, like steam. But is it, but is it huge Faithful? steam. This is Biscuit Basin. Ah, Biscuit Basin. So, okay. Where is Old Faithful? <laughs> I think they moved Old Faithful. Oh, okay. Finally, we have arrived. We are here at Old Faithful. About one mile more to go. We're coming to see you, Old Faithful. Wait for us. Wait for us. We'll be right there. So we have made it finally to Old Faithful. There's like an Old Faithful Inn. There's stores. Um, I am excited to see Old Faithful. Hopefully we can catch her erupting, kind of welcoming me for the first time here and welcoming Turn It Up World for the first yeah. time here. That'd be so cool. I've never seen Old Faithful up close. Yeah, well, next one's gonna be around nine o'clock and uh, we shall return though. It's right there. We shall return, right babe? Can, can you do a special one just for us, Old Faithful? You know, that's what they call me. They call me Old Faithful. Come on, girl, let's, let's go. Something Show me special. what you got. Bison in the road. First bison in the road. Uh oh, wait, there he goes. He's going across. There he goes. Hopefully he like goes off the road. Oh, All right. there he goes. Nice. That's Perfect. Cool. Good job, young man, old man, young lady. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> old lady. There we are. Good job, Bicey. And that's how you know there's an animal sighting. I know. Just look at all the cars. It, it's very rare you're going to be the first one to spot it. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly. Finally. Right there it is. Yeah, you know, we were in Alaska for a long time. No bear. No bear. A lot of bear poop. A lot of bear poop. But now, now, Yellowstone, Yellowstone. right by Lamar Valley, and beautiful, beautiful spot of a bear too. Just, just my own business. Just eating so away, pretty. eating away. Wow, we have a uh, mama black bear with two cubs over there. Look at that. That is awesome. Mama black bear with two cubs. Oh my gosh, look at them. Hello. Buffalo Ranch. <laughs> yes, we are actually right across from Buffalo Ranch. And this is actually, uh, they actually use Buffalo Ranch to, to bring in some buffalo from outside Yellowstone because the population has gotten so low. We're kind of surrounded by the mountains and Dave's yeah. right. You look off into the distance all around you for like at least a couple miles. It's like buffaloes, just buffalo dots everywhere. This is definitely what I remember, yeah. yeah. Well, you called it. You were so right. right. Now, we could have walked uh, right over to the uh, the point of it, right, as it went, goes over, but this is kind of that classic view. I have no words, just Beautiful. the sounds. One thing that's incredibly special about full-time RV living and also filming our adventures is just the memories that we're capturing. And uh, I just love being able to actually watch back uh, our adventures together, Tiny and myself and the two kitties. It's, uh, 
it, it's really special and I know we're sharing it with each of you and it, it's awesome. So I'm gonna cook up something special, something gourmet. I'm gonna fire up the grill. And we're gonna have ourselves some hot dogs. Mm. So I gotta ask you, babe. Yeah. Is that the perfect hot dog? It is definitely the perfect hot dog because it was made by you. Mm. I bet you say that. Uh... <laughs> All the weenies. <laughs> All the weenies. <laughs> You're gonna make me choke. That's not funny. Okay, we're done. I don't think everyone wants to see food in my mouth. We're off. <laughs> So we're actually heading in right now here in West Yellowstone at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. Now we've heard a couple things about this particular sanctuary for grizzlies and wolves. Um, what tends to happen is some of the grizzlies and wolves that kind of insert themselves into more of the human life. Um, if things happen or go away, a lot of times they would euthanize from what we've heard the animals. But here is a rescue sanctuary. So they kind of allow for these uh, wolves and bears to have a second chance. So. At one time, some that get together. Now actually, some seem to be uh, having a little wrestling match over here. Mm -hmm. Let me check it out. You know, it's really cool to learn about some of these bears that are currently out. I mean, there's Bo, which is like he mentioned earlier, the one over with the garbage can. Is that a cooler? Yeah, he's trying to get into that cooler over there. Yeah. That's why you gotta make sure you seal your food in uh, bear-proof containers, because he's trying hard to open yeah, that thing. Yeah, uh, and another reason you really should do that is, one of the reasons they're here is because some of them got used to, Bo, for instance, there's a story, he got used to uh, human food. Now the wolves aren't really putting on a show, babe. I know. This, this is like the afternoon siesta. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see them, but they're just like sleeping away there. Right up there. Know? And look at the size of these fences. Like they are not messing around. This is a huge fence. It looks like there's like a little electric, electric, wire. electric wire that goes across a few feet down from the top. Wow. So they, they aren't messing around in terms of keeping them here. But yeah, it looks like one got up, looked actually quite old. Yeah. So you wonder if these are some older ones, you know, some rescues, things like that. Yeah. I was thinking today's a really good day. One of the cool things here in West Yellowstone, babe, is the food. So I'm like, there's a lot of good eats over here. And then talking to some of the locals and even some of our fellow Turn It Up World family members, I was reading through like IG and they're like, well, we know West Yellowstone, we're here. You gotta check out these two spots in particular. TR Burgers, which is supposed to have some of the best burgers here, and Wild West Pizza. So we already checked out the uh, barbecue spot, which is like Firehole Barbecue delicious yeah, right some good food spots here good food spots. and we're hungry today so i'm excited for it ready to eat i'm ready foodie day, foodie day. <laughs> <laughs> now babe, one thing you'll notice right away in wild west the names kind of a little throwback in time like calamity jane oh, yeah. sitting bull sacajawea <laughs> of course blazing saddle but the pizza we're gonna get is butch cassidy yeah it's a local Wise, favorite yeah local favorite exactly and that comes, of course, with barbecue sauce, baked beans, red onions, and pulled, pulled pork, pork. Which is kind of right up our alley. Yeah. Now, you got to pair that nicely with some of those Diablo wings. No, the chicken wings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, you either get it hot or mild, but we're going mild today. Yeah, we're definitely going mild. Oh, isn't that cute? The pizza has a vibe. How cute that is. It looks, huh? it looks and smells awesome, too. Right? Yeah. But we're diving in first. Yeah, we actually started diving in to the wings already. Very good with the cheese. Look at that. That is cheese. Mm. All right, babe, so you ready for the old uh, bison bison patty burger? I am ready to try the bison. I'm a little nervous to see what you think, but we'll see. Oh, I like it. TR Burger, which is stands for Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, thank you, baby. <laughs> What I want to know is, why is Teddy Roosevelt on my burger bun? It's got a lot of good stuff on there, like bacon. That's good, babe. All right, you definitely taste the more like leanness of the bison, yeah. right? But uh, very good. And you'll like all the different sauces on there, too, and all the fixings that we got in that there. That bully sauce is good. That bully sauce that is good, bully. yeah. <laughs> so that's your turn to try. Why don't you take a right bite out of Teddy? Right out of Teddy. I 
like it. I like the fact that it is leaner. Turn it up, world! So it's our last day here in Yellowstone and there's one thing I have not seen yet. And right. that is Old Faithful. So yeah, the eruption. It's why we saw it. Old I didn't Faithful see the eruption. The end, but the <laughs> I haven't seen the eruption see of the Old eruption. Faithful, which is why they call her Old Faithful. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we're on our way. On our way to see Old Faithful Oop. for one last hurrah here. Oh my goodness, Dave. And this is why you do not sleep in. Yeah, clearly. I made a boo-boo this time. We made it. So apparently, Old Faithful, she's about to go off in like 30 minutes, apparently. But we'll see. I mean, I see all the folks lining up That's here. That's why I call her Old Faithful. I know. She hopes she remains that way after today. Exactly. <laughs> Hi, Dave. What do you think? Yeah, it's cool, right? What do I, what, what do what do I you think? think? Yeah, what do you think, what baby? What do I think? What do you think about it? Exactly? I, I really liked it. We're on the uh, alternating, I guess how you'd say, the alternating plate. Right. It's, to uh, get it on the even number of days, which is even, today. 20 seconds, even number day. Now, we are getting up a little bit later than we expected. It's like 7.20. So the hopes is that the line is not out the, uh, not down the block. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, we'll Some, see. Sometimes they say if it's really busy, even, even from this park, the Grizzly RV Park, you can see it from here. And if it's down here, This slow, you're more likely to see an animal because your eyes have more time to focus. What's that over there? What's that? What's that? Wait, oh, there's a wild animal. Oh, there it is. It's a, it's a mini tiger. No, it's Billy. Hi, Boo. There's oh, Mommy's awesome. Billy. Yeah. You can go out the window. You can look out the window look for a bison. She's gonna, she what? Now she's ready. She says last time she was here, she didn't get a chance to yeah, see wildlife. See now she wants to see wildlife. in the park traffic is moving and i'm excited yes we got through you got through it sounds like they're staging people like they'll kind of bring some people in and then stop them for a while and then bring in another crew so it's gonna be interesting to see how the traffic flows we're gonna head down to old faithful heading down to old faithful we'll see how it is and i'm excited that we can actually maybe check yes, that out like grand prismatic a must see for me on our way to the Grand Prismatic I on know. reopening day here. So nice also. of the gentleman. He was like, just pull up to the window and says, if you guys uh, want to take my spot, come on down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get out and exactly kind of help you out in parking. Because even though we have a small RV, it's still tough to get a get a spot. Oh, it's very tough In these here. parking lots, I mean, yeah. There's spots designated for RVs, but I think when you run out of spots, cars tend to take them. Yeah. So you just got to kind of do what you got to do. And fortunately, after lap number 10, we made it. We made it. <laughs> The further we move on from all those yesterdays, happiness gets nearer. The light that we see closing in so fast ahead, it's hope, it's getting clearer. Ah yes, the Grand Prismatic Spring at Yellowstone's Midway Geyser Basin. Now, while we were on our way to one of what is probably the most famous spot here in Yellowstone, Old Faithful, we had to check out the Grand Prismatic Springs, which is probably the most photographed thermal feature in Yellowstone. All right, so quite a bit of steam. Yeah, this but you morning. know it's under there. You exactly. Know all that beautiful hue of multiple colors is under there. Plus, if you look at the steam on the left hand side. Yeah. It kind of mimics some of that reddish hue. Right. You got it. Watch this. I'm going to show you what it really looks like if you had a perfect angle. Ready? Like yeah. this. Just hold on tight. It'll be all right. Show me the way. Show me a way to some. Oh, 
lot of fun. I know. It's, I can't get over all the water flowing into the river. Was it the Firehole River or something like that? Yeah. I forget the name of it, but so much water just flowing and flowing, just boiling hot water. Boiling hot. <laughs> you know, babe, are you hungry for breakfast? I'm starving. Yeah, I think we need to go back uh, to the desert, so get some eggs. Just kind of cook them up in some of that uh, runoff. <laughs> we can kind of have a little hard-boiled eggs. I don't know, something tells me if you put it in that water, it just might hatch. <laughs> <laughs> So back here huh, at Old Faithful, kind of nice to see Old Faithful once again, and we might be close to uh, kickoff time. Yes, we were here at Old Faithful two weeks before the Yellowstone National Park closure. I must say, even with the alternating license plate system in place, it's just as busy, except this time the skies are blue, and there was something in the background that wanted to see Old Faithful erupt as well. Wait for it. You'll see. Excellent. It's actually super pretty today with the blue sky behind it. Oh yeah. Right, last time it was a little bit more of a cloudy sky. Yeah. What a difference with the blue. Huge difference. Yeah. What about the crowd? Difference? The crowd was awesome. It's reopening. It's kind of a nice <laughs> huge, crowd for the reopening of, huge crowd. of Yellowstone. This is here, a right? massive, massive. Massive. And it's on like both sides. I know. It's, it's, it wraps around the entire I, side. I love hearing the cheering too. Yeah. Or I love hearing the cheering. Yeah. I cannot that believe awesome. there still was a bison like down like yeah. by like the, the inn over there. Okay, so this is a real treat for you guys. So we're just watching here at Old Faithful, and of course, there's a male bison in the center of it all, just enjoying his feed. But evidently, when the tail is sort of up like this, she, uh, the ranger said he's not very happy. So that's a sign that he's not really happy. Oh, is he getting ready for poo? He is. Yeah, he's trying to figure out where is he going. Oh no, he's just, uh, oh, he's just going to the bathroom. There you go. Just going to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, like he seems to be contemplating something. I told you. What is he contemplating? <laughs> well, where to go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good spot. That's a great spot. I got something about. Wow, he's that, that's been about. That's been about a minute. That's like a world record right there. No prostate issue. No prostate issue. <laughs> or, or maybe he does, and that's why it's going to take so long. <laughs> So while well, we're sitting down over here, um, right before Old Faithful, I heard like this sort of gunshot. And I wasn't sure what it was until some folks here just said they thought that uh, the rangers were shooting that into the air because there was a bear heading in this direction. That's pretty interesting. That's cool. So they kind of uh, try to get the bear. There's a huge crowd here. So oh. having a bear come over. Oh, would not would be, be. Unreal, though. Would be really so There's unreal. a lot of wildlife. Tons around, of wildlife yeah. here. Well, you know what? If you didn't see it all day, now you do. Just exactly. sit down and watch Old Faithful. They'll all come to you. Exactly. <laughs> Unexpected. Everybody's shopping. Everybody's shopping that, for those souvenirs. I tell you, the, yeah, the Yellowstone souvenir store there here at Old Faithful is packed. Ooh, are you napping? Look at this one over here, Nappy Poo. Eventually, we're going to try and get you into a harness and you can come and join our fresh air. He's like, ah, eh, I'm fine, just right here. Wow. So, this is for the grand prismatic right. like pools. Oh my gosh. Look how many cars here. I know. All for the reopening here of Yellowstone. Right. But most of these folks, they're all on the even. Yeah, when we drove in, none of this was here. Because we none got in pretty here. early. Relative, right. And this is like crazy. And now, this is right around lunchtime. So tip, get here early. Earlier the better. And all right, don't sleep don't in. Don't sleep in. All right, welcome to Jackson, Wyoming. Hey, babe. I'm excited. I've never been to Jackson, Wyoming. Except for last night we went to get a burger. Because this is kind of, you know, the next day. And I 
feel, I, I don't know what to expect. It's supposed to be really cool. I'm really looking forward to those um, elk kind of antlers, yes. yep. a little arch that's kind of so famous town center. Kind of town center. I remember the first time I saw that I was horrified because I didn't realize antlers fell off in winter. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness, I was like, what are they so doing? Funny. They're killing all these elk, but no. They fall off oh, in winter. Look at that. Nice parking job, babe. Hey, thank you very much. Right? Grogu's gonna hold down the fort. But today is a great day in the beautiful weather for us to try and explore a little of Jackson Hole. I've never been here. I've heard it's such a wonderful place to be. It is a week and night, so I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of fun. And we figure we bring this to our Turner World fam, sort of just what is Jackson Hole like right now? Like things have really changed for her here, so let's go check it out. Wow, this is really cool. I feel like this is like an American Legion post. So it looks like the, some veterans and um, pretty cool. Right? Must be ones that have uh, chartered 1920. It's come a long way since 1920. Yeah. Oh, do you love walking on this sort of wood on, plank boardwalk? On the boardwalk. On the boardwalk. Yeah, you can definitely tell everything has, like follows a nice theme here, kind of that country town. Yeah. Right? And I feel like that is probably something in an ordinance. Like if right. you're gonna build here, it has to kind of still maintain that feel of height. That feel of, ooh. I know, look at this stuff, huh? Wow. Those are real, 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 pick photos. I know. That's amazing. I'll never forget the first time I saw this uh, antler arch. And I didn't understand that actually elk lost their antlers in the winter. <laughs> so I was horrified, saying, oh my God, they killed so many elk. But of course, the elk, elk lose their antlers in the winter time. So that's just, you just go and collect them. You can collect them in the uh, elk refuge. Yeah. And kind of bring them in here, stack them up. And they're at each entrance. Very cool. Well, that would be really horrifying I to know. know, like, if these were all antlers that were taken yeah. from live. And it's not. They aren't at all. Yeah. <laughs> so these are called the elk antler arches. And like Dave was saying, they're kind of across all four entrance points of this little park here which is pretty cool yeah they've been actually at the gate since 1960. yeah wow. they, yeah right, we're gonna run through it before you have a chance so you can kind of see yeah like walking it. through all right let's walk through get ready, baby. let's we're go going through the arches. all right we're going through oh where's my pizza <laughs> there we go quick get back and get that get the camera jackson hole veterans monument oh wow Right, he's riding the Bronco there. Right? This monument is dedicated to the memory and honor of the men and women of CC. So the million dollar cowboy bar. Do you see that over there? I mean, that's, that's a classic. Really a classic. I mean, I've heard this place is really known for its like pieces of Western vibe and history, the whole nine yards inside of the million dollar cowboy bar. Now it's been there a long time, right? Oh, it's been there so long. I mean, I was here years and years ago and it was there. And look at live music. Oh wait. Oh. Check it off at 8.30. It is like 8.29. What? That means there's live music happening and sounds like the steakhouse. Steakhouse is open. Open. I think we get some steaks, get some live music, maybe do some dancing. Oh, I'm ready. I'm All so right. ready. Let's go. Let's do it. Oh wait. But wait, we have to wait for the wait for a cross. Yes. We want to make it there in one piece. Exactly. <laughs> so it looks like this place was actually on Guy Fieri's uh, diner driving and dives. So that's pretty cool. Ooh. Is the credit card okay? We're coming on in. Oh, that's a cool spot. Ooh, Dave, you made a very cool spot. 
Uh, Just in time to the live music. Live music, right. check it out. Looks like it's that. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Hello. Ooh, hi. Hi. There we go. Oh, wow. Wow. Looks like the post will be yeah, do you wanna... tables up there. That's cool. You want to hold it? fun. Right. Very I think the fair was pretty good. I think that's what happens here in Jackson Hole on a Friday night. Right. They all come out. I love the, the dancing. Cocktails. Oh, the dancing. They were kind of going at it. I think that's a very popular thing here, Friday night dancing. We'll take it right down here. Right down here. This is pretty okay, here's right quiet, here, yeah. comfy, and safe. Oh, here we go. We found the pizza spot. This is called Pinky G's. Please use other door. Oh, you can't go this way? Right? Front okay. door. Through here, okay. Wow, they look pretty busy. Right? Let me get up in that spot. Ah, oh, welcome to Pinky G's. Pinky G's Pizzeria, a local Pinky favorite. Pinky G's. I like the sound of that, Dave, a local favorite. All right, let's see what you can do here at Pinky G's. Hi. Uh, we'll go for the 12. And, um, yeah, just, just, I guess, uh, can we just like table water as well? Right. Do I get a beer, babe? Yeah, just uh, table water. So we'll get that. Thank you. 
Oh, sorry, 23. So you got to give your uh, it's a right. table number and order up here. <laughs> um, no, that's it for right now. Okay, thank you. So we got the order placed. It's really cool. It's kind of like I'll in the back open. alley. And you see all those different artwork pieces around the way. Okay, yeah. It's nice. It's like this. It's a little bit of a the town kind of a to sell a little early. It's got those yeah. Right. <laughs> oh yes, please. Thank you. Ooh. Right. I, mean, I think Jackson Hole is a nice town, right? It's, it's certainly built up a lot, yeah. but it still has a lot of charm to it, and the restaurants in there are pretty unbelievable. Yeah. Right? It's definitely an early town. Yes. Right? And that Cadillac bar, though, that's hopping. That's a fun spot to check out. Definitely. And, uh, but clearly, I mean, this is like the home base to go explore the Tetons. Exactly. And do some skiing, maybe yeah. go up to Yellowstone. It's really a place for adventure. Like yeah. Like and and like the that. center town here feels more shops and, yes. and for tourism and A little bit like an Aspen or something. Exactly. Right? But a big, but a big. growing metropolis. Exactly. Well, <laughs> see you later, Jackson Hole. Thanks for having us. See you soon. Fried chicken in the Tetons. Oh, look at all those elk. Yeah, those are elk out there. There's a whole bunch of elk. I yeah. see the white booties. Yeah, I got the booties. There's a lot of them out there. There's a lot, yeah. Good morning, good morning for an early bike ride here <sighs> in the Grand Tetons. The air is so rewarding and fresh. It's not even funny. Dave is lost. Where'd he go? He's trying to sneak up on me, y'all. He realizes I'm the faster of the two. Ah, here he goes. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There he is. <gasps> Look at that view behind you, Dave. Oh my God, yeah. That's like ridiculous. Gorgeous. Lovely. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, bud. You know, we would highly recommend like coming out to this area with some bikes because once you get from where we are, which is the, uh, Gross Ventra, Ventra Campground, Gross Venture Campground, or Grovan, I believe. Uh, you got five miles down the road to 26, and there's bike paths all over the place. That would actually take you even as far as Ginny Lake, and maybe further. But it's beautiful, just explore this, right from a bicycle. <sighs> it's amazing. The sunbeams kind of coming up. It's nice when you kind of get up a little bit. Kind of morning sun. Before the burn off happens in the clouds, you get all these Beautiful. rays. I want to see if we can find some moose, maybe some moose. bear. Ooh, bear. Let's go pedal on down. We didn't actually gerrymander these uh, things to go fast, faster than a bear. Yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> we gotta work on a little supercharge. Gotta work on that supercharge. Yeah, supercharge. But how do you like it? It feels good, right? Oh, I think they're great. I mean, this is so, it's like sim simple and it fits like in the bay. Oh yeah. Our garage, these electric bikes. No, these are great for travel in a small RV, which is perfect for us in the Echo in the garage space. Yeah. Folds I mean, up nice. Woo! All right. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Look at the views! <sighs> Early bird catches the worm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Where well, it looks like there is a sighting. There's a lot of cars up there. So we're heading to see some moose. Hey, babe. Yeah. There's a lot of cars up there. Yeah, let's head over there so you can see some moose. Yeah, that would be so cool. Moose sighting. Moose sighting. All, All right, let's see some moose. Let's moose. Go. Oh man, look at that. He just took off. Woo, gonna catch him. Hold on. There's a moose. It's grazing. This is a pretty common spot for this one. 
He just kind of watches people over that corner. See him over to the right? I know, I see that one. Yeah. Right? I think uh, there might be a mom and a, a baby moose in that direction. So this is like a moose sanctuary, right? You got, you got a, uh, I think a male one over there chomping wind. I guess up there in the trees, a little further up, you have a mom yeah, and a baby, baby, which they, t they tend to kind of hide a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, right over there. There's no antlers, just kind of looking Hello. at it. Exactly. Checking us out. Eventually, yeah. Uh, some serious some serious beaver activity there look at the size of that tree look at that the cut they made on that thing i'm assuming that's beaver don't think someone would leave it that way oh, look at that that is really cut away that's yeah, pretty interesting how they control the water flow babe looks like along the way here of this uh river or stream they have these little dams where they yeah. can kind of divert the water off but i assume they're regulating the water amount so they don't flood the whole thing out but uh, there's a lot of water coming through here now yeah, right it so just yeah. wow you walk across the plank <laughs> go across the plank i, I feel not, a little nervous i don't i don't think so dave i don't even want to attempt it you know sometimes right. made for tv means not real
amazing! <sighs> right, it's so beautiful. Nice job, babe. This is. I know. Look at that. You got the sun shining on the right side of our face. You got the Kess, yeah, sort of. The Tetons off there. Tetons, yeah. Tats Mountains off over to the left, and. So beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. To me. Gorgeous. So beautiful. <laughs> got got a little uh, mommy moose and our uh, little baby. Yeah. Oh, way off in the right. distance there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That was so much fun to say. Oh my gosh. Hey babe. Babe. So, wait for a sec. So we're gonna pack up because we gotta lay out of here very soon. So we gotta get into like breakdown mode. Definitely. Ready to focus? I am ready. Gotta get these bikes in the garage. I know. Then we packed up. Right now I got everything in there. Pull it out, put the bikes in, back in. Let breakdown mode commence. Focus! Okay, so when we're in breakdown mode, the exterior part of the breakdown is Dave's job. The interior is mine. We kind of have like a system in place. Uh, so we try to focus on getting all things in place before the next leg of our trip. So I have quite a bit to do in here since we've been kind of hungering down here um, in the Grand Tetons for the last several nights. So breakdown mode, focus inside. Come in. All right, Bubby? Are you ready for breakdown mode, Bubby? You ready for breakdown mode? Hmm? He's like, I'm ready to break down some more of that food in my mouth. Yum, yum. <laughs> Give me some. <laughs> So Dave and I were here in Virginia City, which is in Western Montana. Now this place has a lot of history and apparently is a living ghost town. Mosquitoes will tell you that for sure. Now I have to say this, there is a lot to explore in this town, including some fun ghost stories we heard about. So we're gonna check out to see what ghosts remain and what awesome stuff we can just find out here in this living ghost town of Virginia City. And there's a ghost, literally right in that window. Oh yeah. There's one. There's a demon. Hello, kind sir. There's a demon. Hello, kind sir. Oh my god, dude. Oh my Let's god. Run. Whoa, mama. Dave thinks he's gonna stay ahead of me, right? So as we get down towards the bottom, I'm gonna show him what aerodynamics is all about. Here I come, here I come. Here he goes. Not to take him. Aerodynamics. <laughs> oh wait, wait. The information center is right here. So here's the visitor center. We made it in one piece. Boy, that was fast. Hello. Where are you guys from? So we're from two places. We're from Nevada. We have a place in Nevada. And we're doing a road trip across America to our house in Boston. Oh cool. So we're uh, sure. out on the road for a, a little bit now. Now we're here. One of our awesome subscribers told us about Virginia City. Cool. And so we're here to explore. Have some fun, meet some ghosts. Trying to find hidden gems Have across America. Dress. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lots well, of hidden gems. Got a map for you here. Oh, oh yay. excellent. Thank you. All right, an actual map. So it's a self guided tour, yeah, is that right? Is. Wow. Look at these photos. Hey, Dave. What that? Guess what? What? I found the perfect place for a picture. Right there? Right here. Why you know is why? that? I have no idea. Because it's the selfie spot. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. We're up with the times. Back on our, back on the choppers. On the here we choppers. go. Rev it up. Rev it up. Come on, rev on out of here. Come on. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I heard it. I heard that. Start, 
the sky was blue Around my alley the high swag and flew They heard a bump and somebody screamed You should have heard just what I said Who do you love? Rolling, rolling Thank you. You're very, very, you're very enthusiastic. <laughs> Always. Always. Thanks. Hi. Where so, are you working? Are you? Do you we, work? At, we're actually, uh, we're actually full-time influencers, so we travel around the world. Oh, I've seen. Travels, so. I've seen you guys. Yeah. yeah. You still have it, and you're still rocking, and you're singing, and it was a treat. We just hopped on our bikes and oh, came yeah. on down. It's, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, I'm a fairly big fish in a tiny pond, but guess what? It's kind of nice. Is that nice? That's cool. Yeah, it's right? kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. So, Thank you so, you so much. much. Really oh, you're welcome. That. Thanks for coming down. Of course. Course. No, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Turn it up, world! Now that's a great way to kick off the hidden gems here in Virginia City. <laughs> that's it's right. Well said, Dave. <laughs> well, what's more appropriate here in a uh, ghost town to go check out the Canterville Ghost? I uh, know. I just saw that. I was like, the Canterville Ghost. <laughs> did you know that it was the Canterville Ghost before Brooklyn? I did, yeah. You did? Oh, so you didn't even tell me. So we're really yeah. about to dive into a little bit of the, uh, yeah, the, illustrious, the illustrious Virginia City Virginia performers. City. Players, players, players. Players. I like players. it. The players. Not crying out loud. Get it right. Wait, I just heard the magic words. Did somebody say popcorn? The only question is one or two. Oh, <laughs> I heard the double magic words. Two. All right. You excited, babe? I'm excited. All right. Now, unfortunately, we cannot film this show. So we're gonna watch the show, enjoy the popcorn, and catch you on the flip side. Catch you on the flip side. Nice place, Turn it up, world! Hey, Dave. So, what'd you think? I thought it was awesome. Was it fun? Oh my god, it's like, it's incredible value completely blew my ex expectations away. Oh, me too. Let's go eat. <laughs> Ooh, okay, we're riding up the hill. <sighs> you know what? Baby. Home sweet home. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna have And a, what's on the menu? Something good, something, something gourmet. Something gourmet. I'm Any excited. hints? Any ideas? If you think you know, if you think you know what we're cooking tonight for dinner, before we show it, Leave in the comments below. No cheating. No cheating. No. All right, so while Dave is outside cleaning the grill at the moment, I have been chosen a tough job of choosing which Brockburst we are going to grill tonight. All right, so now that we got the cute apron on here, the task is ready to rock. So we have three options tonight. We're going with either the Buffalo Cheddar Bratwurst, there's Jalapeno Cheddar, and there's the Red Pepper Cheddar. So I'm, I'm going to see, I'm going to actually, I'm going to gravitate towards Dave probably wanting the jalapeno cheddar because he likes jalapeno bratwurst. A, we're going to say A, red pepper cheddar, B, buffalo cheddar, or C, jalapeno cheddar. And I'm going to say C. So let's see what he decides. Let, let's see. Okay, so as per usual with me, I'm always up to games and fun. Okay, so here we go. We have three options. I'm laying on the table mm, here. Okay. We have buffalo cheddar, buffalo cheddar, jalapeno cheddar, and red pepper wow. cheddar. So, which one would you choose if you were to choose one of those for dinner tonight? Buffalo cheddar. Dun 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 dun. Red do, pepper do, cheddar. Do, do, do. Dun, dun dun dun. Or jalapeno, jalapeno cheddar. Dun 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 dun. Now, we hold your finger up. Hold it up. There it is, and point to the one that you would choose. Let's try this one. Oh, I was wrong, you guys. What do you think of this I one? I was completely, utterly wrong. What do you think of this one, right? Watch, it's gonna be jalapeno cheddar. <laughs> Guarantee you, jalapeno cheddar. Jalapeno cheddar. All right, time is getting ready. We're gonna have a little, uh, little white claw and check out the sunset. Hopefully the clouds don't block the whole sunset. Got clouds rolling in. Look at that perfection, Dave. Is that perfection? I that hope looks, so. I mean, while well, the cheese is coming out of there, that was I mean, take it's two. hot enough. <laughs> That's take two. We don't tell them that, though. No, but I'm, I'm excited. All right, here we go. Here we go. Give it a shot. Ready for the bite? 
You gotta, you gotta, you gotta focus and listen. Hear the snap. I hear no, that's, that's air conditioner. <laughs> Lied to me. That is spicy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just gotta start boozing more. You'll be all set. Ooh. Oh my gosh. It's very good. My very spicy. Perfect for a sunset, right? I know. Look at sunset. We're about to catch it. It's starting to hit. High five up. All right. Mmm. What do you think? There's a snap. Did you make a mess? Mm hmm. A blowout? Mmm. <laughs> Mm. That means yes. Mm. A blowout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's the sunset we're about to enjoy. And there's Dave off in the distance going into the brush. Hopefully he's not going to go too far because he doesn't have his bear spray. <laughs> you better come on back here, boy. <laughs> My word, babe. There's a lot of thunder going on. Oh, yeah. Did you see that outside? Yeah, I know. We're under a severe uh, thunderstorm and lightning warning right now. Yeah, so. look outside. Look at that. Oh, uh, Do you up. see that? Oh, it's just getting started, babe. Look at the flag. Oh my god, look at the, the yeah. flag over there. Now, are you sure it's not like. I saw lightning? lightning, yeah. You sure it's not like a. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally now just trying to beat the thunder, but we just heard thunder. Oh boy, the roads are kind of wet, so be careful. I'm going to try and maintain my speed at like 10 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We'll put 11 to 8. German food, burgers, brats, pierogies, salad, soup. I think I'm interested in... Uh... I'm excited. It's like dinner and a show tonight. It smells good. I know. This place looks really cool. I mean, look at this thing. Do you know what you want to get? Not yet. We'll find out. Yeah. Oh man, sounds like we're in trouble tonight, my friend. Uh, we're gonna be uh, well fed before the show. And? We're gonna buy pierogies and bratwurst and all, a lot of good stuff. Pierogies, bratwurst, German potato salad, which is hot potato salad, and bacon, and a whole lot of. A whole lot of eating. Break outside. Leftovers. Yeah, leftovers. <laughs> we'll see how much we can eat. So these three Bayern beers, so they're brewed locally here in Montana, but they're also brewed to German standards by German people, so they're a German beer and a local beer. I'm going with the dragon. The dragon? Okay. I prefer the St. Louis because I do like Hepatizens and like it's a, it's light but it's not flavorless. I like that a lot. I'll give that a shot. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh. All right, baby. Cheers. Cheers. Nice German brew. And this place is great. Apparently, all the food is like home cooking. <sighs> Whoa, check out this broth, dude. Mm. Which is basically a hot potato salad with bacon in it. That looks That's awesome. That's crazy. That's crazy good. I gotta try it. Look at that thing. Oh, wow. Look at that. Good. It just That's tastes like the cake. It tastes like comfort food. It's all really comfort food. Homemade comfort food. So good. I love it. So good. Well said. Time to put this down and time for to eat. Time to eat. <laughs> You're right. It really does have this kind of home cooked meal yeah. feel right from the kitchen onto the plate into my mouth. <laughs> the brewery follies. Kind of always kicked off things here. Now it's uh, coming full circle. Huh, Dave? We're back full circle. Kind of where we kick things off. I want to go right into the line before we have to end up in the Back front to be seat. Because there we, we shouldn't be in the front seat. So. <laughs> oh boy. So Dave, you ready for this? I hope so. Ready for a little folly yeah. fun? I am. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh wait, where's my helmet? Oh boy. And there it is. Where we're here. We're excited. Are you excited? I am excited. I am very yeah. excited. I love it. Are you excited? Cool. 
I, I mean, it's kind of not in the front, but you're technically in the front. Oh. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to shut it down, enjoy the show, yes. and then maybe come back in intermission. That sounds good to me. Bye-bye. <laughs> I had so much fun. Yeah. You know, there's so many original things in this town. Yeah. Come back now. All right. Thank you. Mmm. Refreshing. I think I see somebody with some magic buttons. Magic some buttons? Magic buttons. Hey, all right. Let's go. That was a duple. We got the buttons. <laughs> Turn it up, world! <laughs> woo! 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 Pow, pow! Excellent. Nice job. Thank you. All right, so we are kind of getting off to a little bit of a late start today. You know, when you're living in a 23 foot RV, uh, it's important to keep things clean every day. Right, Bailey? Now we still have a lot to explore here in Virginia City to really kind of find out what makes this a living ghost town. So we're going to do a lot of that. Now this is all about the hidden gems. And the one hidden gem you've probably seen quite a bit of here uh, throughout the video, but we haven't really talked about much, is this RV park that we're staying in. It's kind of a small mom and pop RV park, but you can tent, it has hookups, it's got water, uh, it has a singular dump station, not a dump station for every little outlet. but. I have yet to check out the awesome um, things that the wife here, she makes homemade from blankets to uh, rugs for your RVs and just a whole bunch of great handmade things. So while um, I'm gonna leave Dave to cleaning up here just a little bit because you know, I that mess is Dave's. I'm gonna go over there and check out what we have to, uh, I'm gonna buy some stuff basically. <laughs> Okay, so change of plans. Obviously, we've been kind of working around the weather conditions here, and uh, we need to get into town and explore this town a bit more. Since we're only doing it via bike, as you can see there, that's our means of transportation. We're gonna have to uh, head on because there's a storm a brewing, you guys. Right over there, there's a storm coming in this direction. <laughs> the irony is we're on electric bikes. Well, we should be fine. Uh, if we get into the town fast enough, there's definitely things that can cover us. So we're gonna explore the town, and I think tomorrow, as we leave here, I'll go in and stop and uh, see what goodies I can purchase. Wow, well, babe. Yeah. This is actually the vigilante headquarters. Cool. At least supposedly, right? And supposedly they met here. Uh, and of course the vigilantes, right? I initially thought they were kind of the bad guys, the robbers, but no, they were not at all. Yeah. Right? They were trying to stop the robbing as, you know, during the whole gold rush, the gold, people try to transfer gold out of town, out of Virginia City, they get robbed. So the vigilantes sprung up because there was really no law enforcement helping them out. So they actually self-enforced and would try people and hang people. Mm. It's crazy. Yes. Oh my. All right. So there's something else I forgot to mention, or we forgot to mention. So in the vigilantes, they also took care of crooked cops. Yeah. Right. Crooked law enforcement. If you're part of the crooked law enforcement crew, the vigilantes would take you. So it almost feels like Robin Hoods, like the Robin Hoods of Virginia City. <laughs> so they'll get you. <laughs> they'll get you. Watch every out. Time. Oh boy, it's just this out. I know. Dave. This place smells old in here. It even looks. Look at the right. rafters. I know. Look at that. It's kind of, oh. it's kind of held up by. Right. Wow. Right. Not sure what's like going old, on in there. Looks like old horse for the right. horses. It does. Old saddles down there, really old saddles. Wow, you got the old uh, Virginia Fire Department right there, number one. Wow, the wagons. Look at that. You get like this like tingly feeling. Like I get like this tingly feeling. Like once you walked in here, you're in, you're in the presence of. You're just feeling the ghosts. They're all around here. That might be here. it. And this is kind of the rolled out transportation in Montana territory, 1863 to 1889. Wow. So I'm starting to get a little ghostly creepy in here. Let's go find Dave. Dave! Oh. Hey, babe. Hey. And there's no toy, toy store down here. A toy, a toy. Very old. Ooh, that's scary. Maybe there's Annabelle. What do you think? Should we try oh, to look for Annabelle? Let's go see if Annabelle's inside. Just waiting to be discovered. Brought to a nice home. Annabelle. Do you hear that? 
Oh, there's something scary. There are some dolls down there. There's a lot of dolls down there. Really? Hannah, interesting. You get nervous? I think you're a little nervous. I, I am a little nervous. I know because we're kind of in a ghost town, so you kind of get that feel of the times. But boy, this is a... It just gets worse when darkness settles in. But that's for later. <laughs> Got the old babies in the carriage. Got the Overland Circus over there. There's even like a teepee and a spinning wheel. Looks like a baby high chair. Early rendition of the high chairs. <laughs> Imagination. <laughs> So right outside the uh, toy store here, it's sort of this rock with this plaque on it that says uh, Virginia City has been designated a registered National Historic Landmark, 1962. You Whoa. Can you can kind of tell it's a gold rush town. Yeah, how? See all these scales for sale in the jewelry store. <laughs> Look at all those scales. No, yes. weigh, no, weigh, the, uh, weigh, weigh the gold. Weigh the gold. Wow, look at all this though. Look at the, there's even jewelry in there. Yeah, it's amazing. Hello, sir. I see you. Hello. I need to purchase something today in my school night. I have everything you need in here. Hey, what do you got for me? Let's see what we got. Everything. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> look at these yeah, old buildings. Look at these old buildings. Right? What do you think? Now supposedly, now I don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly some of the more inexpensive brothels, I guess, were back here. They didn't have street. They weren't right on the main street. They were actually back here. So these were the more inexpensive brothels back here. Yeah, I mean, that's what we heard. Not sure. They look like little shacks. Right, little. Well, let's go check it out. What's back here, babe? I don't know, but apparently there's... There's more uh, buildings with plaques on them. The Smith McGovern Barn. Sneak a peek inside. Ooh, it looks like an old car, old material. Wow. I'm just afraid a hand might come out. Excuse <laughs> me. Right. Oh, yeah, look at that. Holy moly. Let them see inside better than us. All right. Well, how fitting for us to be back here at the Opera House where we actually saw the Canterville Ghost. How cool was that show? Oh, it was awesome. Now, it was so good. What we did not know is that this place is haunted. And what some of the locals Yikes. have said, Dave, is that the person that's haunting this is a little girl named Hannah. And Hannah, she does a couple of things that some of the players and past say they may have heard or seen in the dressing rooms in the back where they have their outfits fit a certain way and they somehow get moved, apparently. Yikes. But, that's a little creepy. Now, why is she haunting this place? Well, story goes it like this let me show you so this lake behind me apparently this is where Hannah drowned oh, uh, and basically she drowned trying to save her brother so the story goes that she's been haunting the opera house and using it as her playground and I think from what some we heard from some folks that this was on a one of those ghost shows where um, here they put down a toy and I guess an outfit they walked away and they came back. The toy was in a different room and the outfit was swapped around. So it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting stories to this little town. Matter of fact, what is that noise? Is this little doggy or a wolf or something? Are you kidding me? Listen to that. It's going to sound creepier at night. Sure. So, the, of course, oh, up there you can see. Oh, they're not getting me. Huge. I know. You see up there, right? The, uh, the opera house. Right down Look here. Look at that. Yeah, mosquito just got me. Look how huge that is. Busted by a mosquito. I took him out. Whoa! Took him out. So this is really neat, babe. So these two buildings behind me, they're called the Cogswell and Taylor buildings. So Minerva Cogswell was one of the independent black women that created a, a business for herself here in this sort of environment. Wow. And she did that, her and her sister basically uh, did that by taking in laundry, but they also housed, where they would take in funds, including a man by the name of Jack Taylor, who actually fought in the Union during the Civil War. And Jack Taylor actually, I think in the 1880s, he stayed here until basically, I, I believe her name is, I believe her name is Bigford, who 
who took him in, you know, and kind of took care of him. And she was the wealthy black woman that basically ran the water, had the water company here in the town. So very interesting story. Uh, hello. Look at that, huh? You don't see this every day. <laughs> After a day like today I so know. far, we still have a lot to go. We do. I'm kind of hungry. I'm starving. Any place in mind? I just want the best steak in town. Oh, steak! I think I know what you're talking about. Do it. As the sun is setting here in Virginia City, we are excited and getting ready to enjoy a little bit of a ghost tour here in Virginia City. And there's a host that takes us around to show us exactly what we're in for. All right, so we already paid for our tickets and we're about to head up for this ghost tour here, which kind of kicks off here at the Bale of Hay Saloon. So we're uh, about to see what this is all about. So I hear it's one hour long and about a 12 block radius. There we go. But other people have had things happen to them. Everybody comes back alive. But they've had things happen. They've gotten strange pictures. So if you disappeared here, you disappeared. And he says, when you hear her laugh, you have to laugh too because it's so happy and cheerful. And he turned and looked again and she disappeared right in front of his eyes. And he's a typical Virginia City person. He said to me, I don't believe in this stuff, but I know what I saw. So mm. he does too. Yeah. This is the, so this is where, this is where she stands. Is, yeah, right here. This is where Hannah stands. Look at it on, uh, oh, David, looks like it's open. I know. Oh, I okay. Apparently a lady in, dressed in blue lives here. Right, and then there's also an evil man. We have to come back late at night and see what we find out. I don't know about that. I think I'm gonna... I wonder if that door is unlocked. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we'll go this way. <laughs> Wait, you see something there? Wait a second. Did you see something? I thought I saw something in that window. I know. Yeah. And there is a big beam that holds the two side walls together. That's the beam these gentlemen were hung on. Some of the people we hung were as good as we are, and some of us are as bad as some of the people we hung. <laughs> You look a little ghostly. A little ghostly. How about now? Do it look like a cool ghost? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's move it. Let's dance, dance and ghost. Dance and ghost. Let's do it. Ready? Let's bring it. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Well done. I just don't like, you know what's funny? I don't like to have my back to the like, water. Because that's like when things kind of come up. Could be. Look at that. There could be gold in there too. And also dead bodies. Yeah. The girl drowned. Yeah. Remember? I know. Hannah. 
So you probably see this giant grizzly bear kind of ready to go after its salmon statue here. Well, we're right now we're in front of the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center here in West Yellowstone. So Dave and I went inside to kind of check out some of the animals that have been given a second chance. And why a second chance? Because of the stupidity of humans, whether it's leaving food out, not packaging things, or even feeding them. So one of the major things I would highly emphasize to really enjoy things out here and to give these animals a fair chance at life and love is don't feed them don't go near them at least for bears and wolves you want to stay about 100 yards 100 yards away from a bear and if there's young you might want to double that and that's how you know there's an animal sighting I know. just look at all the cars it, it's very rare you're going to be the first one to spot it yes exactly right? exactly finally right there it is yeah you know, we were in alaska for a long time no bear no bear a lot of bear poop a lot of bear poop but now now yellowstone, yellowstone. right by lamar valley and Beautiful, beautiful spot of a bear too. Just, just my own business, just oh, eating so away, pretty. eating away. Wow, we have a uh, mama black bear with two cubs over there. Look at that! That is awesome. Mama black bear with two cubs. Oh my gosh, look at them. Hello! So we're actually heading in right now here in West Yellowstone at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. Now we've heard a couple things about this particular sanctuary for grizzlies and wolves. Um, what tends to happen is some of the grizzlies and wolves that kind of insert themselves into more of the human life. Um, if things happen or go away, a lot of times they would euthanize what we've heard the animals. But here is a rescue sanctuary. So they kind of allow for these uh, wolves and bears to have a second chance. Now one thing about the bear exhibit is that they can't put all the bears in together because they don't all get along. So they'll put like one or one, one to three bears at one time, some that get together. Now actually some seem to be uh, having a little wrestling match over here. Let me check it out. If you're interested in checking out this facility for adults, just so that you're aware, the tickets are $15 per adult. Um, that allows you access to the grounds here to really enjoy the different varieties of animals. It, it's nice. I'm, I'm not usually a huge fan of zoos, but right. when you hear things like this, um, more like a second chance sanctuary, I, I like it. Tanya is so right about keeping your distance. I'm sure you've seen videos too on YouTube of just people getting too close to bison in particular in the park and have paid prices for that. So be careful, you can get yourself hurt doing that and you do endanger the animals. Now, when you're planning your trip to Yellowstone, it's remember, it's a huge park. It's actually bigger than Delaware and Rhode Island combined with incredible amount to see, incredible features. So do not try to do it all in one day. And also make sure you plan in advance and also book reservations in advance as well. Yellowstone gets extremely busy in the summer and reservations and hotels and restaurants those fill up and if you're coming into west yellowstone in an rv a great spot to stay is the yellowstone grizzly rv park it's a great location just outside of town you can just walk uh, a couple blocks you're right in downtown in the center of town and just a few blocks away also from the gates of yellowstone just a great spot people here are super friendly place is very clean and you got this too I mean, come on check that out and it can be tough to get reservations here as well you can see here, sold out, no reservations tonight. So make those reservations early. So Yellowstone is vast, it's humongous. There's a lot of things you can see and do inside of Yellowstone. With that being said, there is a limit to the speed limit of driving within Yellowstone. And that is a 45 mile per hour speed limit. And it's there for a reason. And some places are even less. You know, there's a lot of folks that are there basically sightseeing, trying to find bison, trying to find bear, trying to find elk and wolves. So really respect the rules of the road as well and with that being said make sure you fill up your gas tank before you even enter Yellowstone because there's hidden pockets you might find a few sporadic gas stations but it's far and few in between and there is no reception out there so unless you want to hitchhike on the back of a bear fill up your gas tank <laughs> Stops along the way. Right. It's like every every corner there's something different to see. 
Uh, but the air is super cold, super fresh. I am still um, high hopes that we're going to see a moose. But I just love that we every every inch of the way you stop, there's like a different terrain. There's like a different view. The sun comes out and gives you like a whole different perspective of Yellowstone. It's awesome. And when you're driving down the roads in Yellowstone, you're looking for wildlife. You see some amazing elk or some amazing bison you want to check out. Don't just stop in the middle of the road blocking all traffic. That's a dangerous situation. Pull to the side, beyond the line. You can do that. There is space to do that, to get your photos, get your pictures, and definitely, definitely don't quickly do a U-turn as well. We actually had a couple times where drivers in front of us did quick U-turns because they probably saw an animal behind that they had passed, yeah. and it created a dangerous it's situation, really right, babe? Oh, it was close. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, we're coming up to our first stop here where there's people on the road what is it do you think it's a bear do you think it's bison a lot of, my, it's, what percentage do you think it's bison? I, I think it's bison because I what can't percentage do you think 95 percent. 95 percent is bison i say it's something else i say it's a geyser so off in the distance uh towards the right hand side which you can't see off in the distance over there are there's a gray wolf i'm happy to see you because i was I like should we be walking this close when i see you like we're I good <laughs> yeah it, 100 yards is the rule of thumb. Let's talk with the ranger out there for a split second, and there is a gray wolf That's laying awesome. in the pastures out there. Yeah, I've never seen a, a wolf in the wild. That's yeah. so cool. And these folks here, I was worried at first. I'm like, don't get too close. But I saw the ranger, and she said the rule of thumb is 100 yards. Yeah, so we're plenty of distance. Plenty there. of space between that and the gray wolf, which is out there. High five, Yeah, nice. Okay, nice Hopefully start. Hopefully, we'll get a good look at one eventually, yes. but. That's amazing. It's a great sight. You can tell, I mean, when you see all these cars here, it's not just a few bison. No, <laughs> like it's not. Everybody's pulling, everybody's over. pulling everybody's over. Everybody's pulling over to see the wolf. Now that is one big bear. That is one big bear. And you know what this big bear just told me? He said, do not throw coins, do not throw rocks, do not throw anything into those hydrothermal wells that you see, those beautiful sulfuric smelling wells, because by doing so, they're not wishing wells, but you're also gonna be damaging the environment. And speaking to that, leave things in place. Leave things where you found them here in Yellowstone. You know, just leave a footprint. And one thing that you can take with you is a bunch of pictures. Take your picture with you, but leave everything else. You know, there's a, a vast, vast landscape of Yellowstone here and let everyone enjoy it as it is. And you can enjoy those pictures. Right, Mr. Bear? <laughs> Whoa, look at this. It's a little stinky. Oh, a little stinky, but oof. It is beautiful though. Look at that. Look at the colors. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Well, this beautiful pool that you see over to my right, your left, is gorgeous, but you are not allowed to throw coins in there. Seriously, it is unlawful. Seriously. Right, it's not a wishing well. Not a wishing well, you guys. You're throwing coins in. You throw something in there, it'd be a wish you wouldn't Don't expect. Don't do it. Whoa, this is a really cool train. I <laughs> know it is cool. It's actually the Montana Centennial train, which was used in 1964 to celebrate the 100th year anniversary of Montana being a territory. Kind of cool, right? That's super right? cool. Look at that thing over there. Look at the look at the artwork on it. Yeah, you can see what was true then is still true now. And when you head into the park, you'll notice there's a visitor center at each park entrance. And we recommend you actually go inside there, talk to the rangers, get the free maps, come up with a game plan if you don't have it already in terms of what we're going to hit that day. And maybe ask the rangers where they've seen animals and sightings have been uh, over the past week. It might help you as you plan your visit. Remember? This is definitely what I remember, yeah. yeah. Well, you called it. You were so right. right. Now, we could have walked uh, right over to the uh, the point of it, right, as it went, goes over, but this is kind of that classic view. I have no words, just Beautiful. the sounds. After you do that, keep in mind you're probably in for a long day in the park so we recommend that you pack a lunch mm. there's not a ton of food spots in the park and what you will find will probably be expensive may have lines so pack a lunch now if you do pack a lunch just keep in mind you are in bear country so make sure you have the food 
in bare safe containers so the smells don't get out, especially if you're going for hikes and putting the food in a pack. You don't want to be hiking down a trail and like wafting like salmon smelling or tuna, tuna fish, fish all across because those bears they can smell for miles and they may come and uh, visit you for lunch. You know it's really cool to learn about some of these bears that are currently out. I mean there's Bo which is like you mentioned earlier the one over with the garbage can. Is that a cooler? Yeah he's trying to get into that cooler over there. Yeah. That's why you got to make sure you seal your food in uh, bear proof containers because he's trying hard to open yeah, that thing. Yeah uh, and another reason you really should do that is one of the reasons they're here is because some of them got used to Bo for instance there's a story he got used to uh, human food you know yes. some food sources so that might have been left out and he got really confident and sometimes when they get too used to the human food sources um, they end up getting euthanized. Oh see the raven right there? The raven was smart enough to go into their cooler their lunch cooler and he's picking out right now it looks like he picked out the apples but there's a lot of uh probably some goodies in there that he'll be picking out so by the time these folks get back in their truck they may be out of lunch while yellowstone is a great and fun driving park don't see it all from behind your windshield get out of your car or in our case our rv and explore yellowstone there are a lot of fun hiking trails you can enjoy even some impressive boardwalks but speaking of boardwalks stay on the boardwalks they are there for a reason for your life and for your safety as well as the fact is if you go off those boardwalks it can be actually illegal to do so so stay on the boardwalks enjoy the scenery if you jump off you just might boil the skin off your feet so what do you think babe first time in yellowstone i love it right it is so amazing it reminds me so much of iceland it right does here. kind of like the boiling uh underground all the water coming up steaming it's crazy oh and what a perfect time you know it's a little oh, bit yeah. later in the day so there's no one here so I we know. have it all to ourselves my leopard crop <laughs> all right this is amazing it's spinning it's spinning yeah, it's like a little mud little mud pots there yeah look at it bloop, 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 bloop. hey dave yeah look at it a live geyser going on right there it keeps on going right it just keeps going yeah giving all the good stuff right over there huh I just love how you see like snow-capped mountains in the distance. Like off. Right, bison in the field. And yeah. then this geyser right here. I mean, right geyser. here. There's bear prints. No, I, I think they're going to a place to get some coffee. <laughs> I think it's time for some coffee. All right, so change of plans on the coffee. We decided to hop into a fun little spot here in downtown West Yellowstone on Madison Ave called Bullwinkles for a little of a, a delicious meal called Saka, which almost reminds me of like a fish and chips. I know, it looks really good. So yeah. We're excited, we're super hungry. Getting out of the cold. But let's get back to the list. Yes. And uh, one important tip is, when you're in Yellowstone, don't sleep in. Get up early, get yourself out of bed, and get on into the park because the crowds will really pick up later in the morning and early afternoon. So if you can get in early, you can beat the crowd. It's also the best time to really check out the wildlife as well. Oh, absolutely. Hey, that's Gabe, by the way. Say What's hello. going on? Say hi. <laughs> Bullwinkles. Great bread. Got butter <laughs> yeah, on yeah. the table. That's Some right. butter. Thank you. So it's our last day here in Yellowstone, and there's one thing I have not seen yet, and right. that is Old Faithful. So yeah, the eruption. It's like we saw. Old I didn't Faithful see the eruption. The end, but the <laughs> I haven't seen the eruption of the Old eruption. Faithful, which is why they call her Old Faithful. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we're on our way. On our way to see Old Faithful Oop. for one last hurrah here. Oh my goodness, Dave. And this is why you do not sleep in. Yeah, clearly. I made a boo-boo this time. If you are gonna get up early here, especially this time of year, late May, early June, you might wanna wear layers because the wind and the weather can change at the drop of a day. No, it's true. It's it, this, like our, our week in particular this week, boy, it's been like warm and suddenly getting windy and cold. So bring those layers and be prepared for a change of weather. Buffalo Ranch. <laughs> yes, we are actually right across from Buffalo Ranch. And this is actually, uh, they actually use Buffalo Ranch to, to bring in some buffalo from outside Yellowstone because the population has gotten so low. Yeah, I think they it was down to like 40 buffaloes remaining and so they kind of migrated yeah, them here. There would have been none in Lamar Valley at the time. And um, they actually crossbred 
with the buffalo here in Yellowstone. And now you can see they're just all, all over, the place, over the place, all across Lamar Valley. It's really cool. Yeah, this buffalo ranch spot definitely has a, a wonderful feel. You're kind of surrounded by the mountains and Dave's right. You look off into the distance all around you for like at least a couple miles. It's like buffaloes, just buffalo dots everywhere. Free me from the prison that I call myself. Pull me from the confines of my timid shout. Here in Yellowstone, you are at an altitude at about 6,000 feet and up. So keep that in mind when you're off doing your hiking. Take your time. Uh, just really enjoy Yellowstone for what it's worth. It's very therapeutic to be here and stay hydrated. Exactly. That's right. Drink that water. All right. So for Dave and I, June is kind of a special month. Uh, it's sort of our birthday month. You know, for those of you that don't know, Dave and I, we share the same birthday, June 18th. And so we decided we're going to be here in Yellowstone. There's this fun spot that's very popular right behind us, right there called the Buffalo Bar. So we're going to go in, have a celebratory beer, and just enjoy the fact that we're here in Yellowstone for our birthday month. We got cheers. cheers. Great fun time here. Boom, boom, boom. And happy birthday, Mom. Happy month. birthday, Mom. And for all June birthdays, happy birthday, Mom. You too. Too, too, too. Now, if you have witnessed people doing stupid things in Yellowstone that we have not mentioned, please let us know in the comments below. Actually, and also, if you know how to make someone's trip that much more enjoyable here in Yellowstone, also leave those in the comment section below. You know, Yellowstone is definitely one of our greatest and first national parks in America, and you can enjoy it in so many ways. And just simply following some of these steps can help you to enjoy it now and in the future.